Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson, and welcome to the final episode of the Steven Universe Retrospectives. And today, we're going to be discussing episodes 19 and 20 of Steven Universe Future, slash the final episodes of the entire series, I Am My Monster, and the Future. So, to recap. So, throughout the entirety of Steven Universe Future, Steven himself has been dealing with stuff he's been dealing with abandonment issues as his friends have been moving on he's been feeling unwanted slash unneeded as he feel like he as he feels like he doesn't have any more problems that he has to solve and without those he feels well useless he's dealing with emotional issues as he's starting to have temper flare-ups and emotional outbursts that he later learns are a side effect of all the traumas and battles that he's gone through ever since he was younger he's been He's been feeling like he's been losing support systems as as he in an attempt to try and hold on to Connie. He tried mar he tried asking her to marry him before she gave him up. Not right now. He tr he lost faith in his dad as his dad as his dad's solutions to his problems are pretty much the exact opposite of what Steven needed. And in an attempt to try and gain control of his temper flare ups as they've been causing him to glow pink and kind of get stronger, more powerful, and old and almost hurt people. He attempt he tried tra training with Jasper and he wound up going so far that he accidentally shattered her in the middle of a battle and the end result while he was able to restore her thanks to the essences of, of the diamonds well he felt so guilty about it that he ran away to, to homeworld to try and talk to the diamonds about this only for things to get worse as none of the solutions that they had that they provided could actually help him and in it and he learned that he still has some ex excess resentment towards him as when trying to communicate with white he had a fantasy about smashing her head into a pillar to just to try and shatter her gem. As such, even more even more worse off, Steven returned home, and he just was kind of stuck in a constant pink state because his emotions were just running high, and he just kind of went into denial. However, because the, the pink state caused all of his powers to just get so enhanced, it was causing even more issue, causing even more problems, and as a result, the, all, pretty much Steven's friend, both of the gems, his, his dad, and Connie all just kind of had an intervention with Steven and wanted to know what was going on with him, and while Steven put up a fight at first as he tried to leave and focus on other things and avoid the issue entirely... Eventually, they got the truth out of him as Stephen as Stephen confessed about how he's been having bad thoughts, how he got how he's been feeling more angry, how he snapped at his dad, and even how he shattered Jasper and even restored her. Something that horrified the gems. And as Stephen finally lays bare all these things he's been feeling, all these things he's been bottling up, eventually. He just kind of has a breakdown right then and there as he talked about as he talks about how they all look up to him, how they all see him as this paragon, as this great figure that they that, that's so mature for his age, but how he but ultimately the reality is he hasn't learned anything from his lessons and he's not that kind of kid anymore. He's a fraud, a monster. And the last episode ended with him with him saying that almost curling up on the floor before something big burst out of his back. And that's where I am my monster picks up. As well, the episode actually opens with us kind of go with us kind of going around Beach City, seeing its denizens doing their own thing. We see we see uh, Sour Cream and his stepdad Yellowtail as they're at the docks listening to some of Sour Cream's music. We see Vidalia; she's in the middle of a painting. However, as they're all just kind of doing their own thing, they hear a rumbling, a, sm a small earthquake across the land, and it confuses everyone. Even at Little Homeschool, they can feel it as they're still trying to rebuild the houses that Steven accidentally destroyed. And as everyone looks to the horizon to see what the source of the, of the thumping is, they're greeted to a monster. Specifically, the sight of a large, pink reptilian Godzilla-like monster rising from the beach before letting out a before letting out a tremendous roar that shakes the earth which yeah the instant that the that the B team of the Crystal Gems see this they decide they need to jump into action as as Bismuth, Peridot and Lapis end up end up warping to the t to the temple ready to get ready to get into battle and kick ass only everyone's gone, and there's a massive hole in Steven's house. And when they go outside to check, they see this. They see the crystal gems, Connie and Greg, trying to actually talk down the monster. As Greg says, "Calm down, son. Deep breaths. Deep breaths." And while at first the B team is ready to just go in and take this monster down, Garnet tells them they have to stop, and when which confuses them. But then they ask another question: "Where's Steven?" And Garnet reveals the big pink monster is Steven. Yeah. 
this further feeds into my corrupted gems are, are are corrupted because they're dealing with emotional trauma theory which again is problem is uh, is not my theory but it's a good theory it's a theory wherein that the reason why, like as garnet said a gem basically when a gem is corrupted it's not like they broke the fabric of their limbs but the fabric of their minds they're broken up here to the point where they don't even know what they're supposed to be and part of why i suspect what that gems were corrupted in the first place from the gem war is because as we saw i think that yellow diamond blue diamond and white diamond unintentionally projected all of their anger feeling of uh, anger grief and sadness from the supposed shattering of pink diamond onto all the available gems and as a result all the gems took on the, the that raw emotion and it broke their minds transforming them into their corrupted selves and we saw that further with other gems like when jasper tried fusing with a gem with a corrupted gem and she wound up catching it but ultimately the thing that kind of helped further it along was her anger towards rose quartz and now we're kind of seeing it with steven here because uh yeah he is indeed corrupted sorry chindy jumped onto the bed basically Steven has lost, basically, Steven's mind has been broken. He has now been transformed into this monster. And, of course, once the B-team hears this, they're like, well, can we fix him? Can we put him back? Well, or, or at least Connie does, but Garnet kind of gives a hard reality, gives a hard reality check. As long as Steven thinks he's a monster, that's what he'll remain. And, well, Steven is not exactly in a talking mood, because in his monstrous form, he's kind of causing a few problems as he slams his arms and his face right into the side of the of the cliff that the gems the temple is in and just ca starts causing rubble to rain down on everyone and basically while the basically while the gems are able to avoid getting crushed by any debris well they have to and they have to try and figure out what to do about steven because obviously no one wants to hurt him it's steven but at the same time He's not in his right mind. He's a monster now. And as a monster, he's gonna try and... He's gonna destroy things just on pure instinct. So they have to at least contain him. As such, Garnet's able to... Garnet assigns, assigns Connie and the B team to keep Steven away from the town and, while also keeping him contained. As such... As to try and help with the matter, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl fuse together into Alexandrite. And as Steven tries clawing his way over the cliffside to get to Beach City, Peridot and, thankfully, Peridot and, B and Bismuth are able to get his attention by slamming into him and not and kind of just smacking his face. Because his face has massive horns on the front and they're able to hit that. And that does manage to get Steven's attention so that he tries chasing after them right into the ocean. And sure enough, once he gets into the ocean, Lapis is able to throw up some water chains to hold him in place. Although, unfortunately, although, unfortunately, this is a temporary solution at best. And I should also probably mention that when Alexandrite attempted to stop Steven, he threw Alexandrite into a mountain and caused her to unfuse back into the Crystal gem. So, again, that's back to that. That's, again, that was a minor thing. I'm sorry I'm missing stuff. But my point is this. Steven is contained, but they have no idea for how long. Because, after all, they can't just keep Steven like this, and they can't just keep him locked up. As such, Garnet, re as it's the group realizes that if they want to get through, if they want to heal Steven and turn him back into, well, Steven, then they need to get through to the boy inside. The kid who's just crying out in anger, hurting, who and basically reach that human side and bring it back to the surface. The only problem is, the one who would be best suited to do that job is Steven. And, for, and unfortunately, none of them really know how to get through to this, get through this thing. And to make matters worse, well, company arrives. As while they're holding Steven in place, guess who should show up but the Diamonds, who arrive back in their... Three, th three fourths of the Diamond Megazord. Who the reason they're here is because when Steven ran away from Homeworld, he left one of his flip flops behind, and they're here to deliver here to deliver it back. Which I, I kind of love that that's the excuse that they use to come visit. Which I love, which I, which I think is hilarious. However, when Spinel steps out to deliver the flip flop, she that's when she sees the crystal gems holding holding Steven in place, and so when the diamonds come out, they're like, what the hell's going on? Where's Steven? What is that thing? And once again, they have to reiterate, it is Steven, which shocks the diamonds, and they're actually, and they're very much, and they're very much freaked out because, well, Steven's clearly corrupted. As such, each of them attempt to try and fix Steven, so as, as they try, each of them try using the new powers on them, but they all end in failure. Steven's too, 
Steven, when, when Yellow Diamond tries reverting Steven back to his natural form, he out, he manages to resist it. When Blue Diamond tries calming him down with her clouds, he just breathes it away and it ends up hitting Yellow Diamond and Spinel, which I find hilarious. And then and then when White Diamond tries using her tries using her prismatic powers to try and have Steven speak through her so he can actually talk about all the things he's going through, well, the feedback is so is so hard that it actually causes White to collapse. And while Blue and while she's able to recover quickly, it's clear that the thing that she tried connecting with is not Steven anymore. There's no there's no mind up here for her to actually talk to. So there's really nothing to get through to. And unfortunately, things just keep getting worse as Steven continues resisting against Lapis's water chains and actually manage and well he manages to destroy them utilizing another roar only this one's even more supercharged as all of his scales and his horns start g glowing before he before his eyes just widen and he just erupts in energy with a with a massive roar pretty much just shatter which not only shatters the water change but the uh, but the but the basically the force is enough to throw everyone back all the gems greg connie everyone back and basically everyone just falls to their knees as steven gets free and so once more steven tries to to make his way back to the back to the beach but another bit of unexpected help comes in as it turns out in all the damage of some of the or some of the some of the land some of the earth beneath the beneath the water cracked and well something is seeping through and that something is the cluster who manages to bring out an arm uh, manages to bring send enough of itself out to form an arm so then that which immediately hold, tries holding steven back and although for although again this is a temporary solution, as the it turns out Steven's even more powerful than the cluster right now, which makes sense. He's essentially a corrupted diamond. He's obviously his monster form is going to be more destructive than a, your average monster. And so, yeah, the gems are now racking their brains trying to figure out how to help Steven here. Yeah, at one point, they even tell Greg that he should get out of here. This is dangerous. But Greg says, no. He's not going anywhere. There's because his son is his son is in pain. He's hurting, and all and he blames himself here. He should have protected him more. He should have done more to help him. And now look at him. He hurt. He's in pain. He's so he's hurting, and he, he can't. And now he, Greg just does not want to abandon him. And Greg's not the only one riding the blame train here. As everyone there starts beating themselves up. Hell, Garnet even unfuses over this as she as she go as she goes back as she reverts back into Ruby and Sapphire, and Sapphire just, Sapphire and Ruby just break down crying as well, because Sapphire even says that if they can't fix this, Steven's gonna be stuck like that forever, and everyone just one by one keeps beating themselves up. Pearl said, Pearl is so sad that Steven was in so much pain and so angry, but none of them saw it. Amethyst is beating herself up because she thinks she should have done something before all this. Hell, even the diamonds are beating themselves up, themselves up, as Spinel, as Spinel blames herself because she put Steven through all that crap in Steven Universe Future, which probably didn't help his mental state, but the one who takes the crown for all the blame is White Diamond, who says that the only reason that anyone did anything that they did was because White Diamond made everyone miserable, and that just kind of went down the ladder all the way to Steven, and it's just everyone is crying because nobody has n any idea what to do. But in the midst of all this, there is a voice of reason. As one of the one person in this crowd is not crying, and that someone is Connie, who pretty much just tells everyone, "Yes, yes, this is your fault, but right now is not the time to make this all about you." And she pretty much just lets everyone know now is the time to help Steven. That yes, he's been there for all of them. He's been there to help them. And he does all that because he's Steven. And he cares about everyone. He puts everyone's needs before his own. But right now, he can't do that because he's hurting. He's the one in pain. And the only person that Steven can't be there for is him. But that's why he has them. They, ne they He needs them to be there for him right now. And which means they need to put all of this aside, not make it about them. They need to do everything they can to help Steven. And that gets through to everybody. Everyone calms down. That manages to get everyone's spirits back up. Everyone is still clearly sad as some, some are still wiping tears from their eyes. But this at least gives them enough of a fighting spirit to keep trying as Ruby and Sapphire once more fuse back into Garnet and Garnet immediately gets a plan ready. As part of that plan is, to, as part of that plan is for... 
yellow diamond to make to make garnet huge and then likewise she pretty much just has an assault plan in mind as the first wave is supposed to be lapis to try and keep steven in place because he's gonna break free from the cluster at some point and the meanwhile everyone has to just charge forward and get ready to and get ready to strike and so the plan goes in action as steven does manage to break free from the cluster's arm and uh, however before uh, however as he charges at the beach lapis flies at steven and manages to manages to throw up enough of a wave or to splash in steven's face which caused him to just stop and which caused him to stop and get some water out of his eyes but as he re as he tries regaining his senses he looks at the beach and he sees the and he sees garnet the diamonds and all the other and all of his friends and family just launching out just flying right at him calling his name and before steven has the chance to even get out of the way garnet jumps into the air dives at steven and gives him a hug just like it's it's like a forceful hug but it's also a loving one as she just holds him there. And while Steven is just kind of struggling for a little bit, Garnet just softly tells him, Steven, you were there for me when I fell apart. Now I want to be there for you. And Steven looks like he's struggling for a little bit, but he stop he stop he starts to stop. And lap and suddenly the other everyone looks at this and realizes it's working. It's getting through. And one by one, everyone runs up to Steven, and they all and they all join in. The diamonds each give a hug, with White giving essentially a supportive hand on his shoulder with a big smile, like she's she's just trying. But one by one, all of them just wrap Steven in a hug, grab it, just holding on to whatever part of the, any part of him they can, and just giving him as much love as they can. Like yeah, well, even Spinel just wraps her arms around everybody and holds everyone, and just kind of holds everyone. But all of them just tell Steven it's okay, we're here. Paradox says Steven for some, Steven, you never gave up on me for some reason. I don't understand, and I want to be there for you. I, Amethyst tells Stephen that it's that he under, that she understands that it sometimes she doesn't feel like you'll ever like love yourself, but it's possible. And Bar Bar Pearl tells Stephen that she understands what it feels like to, hi to hide a part of yourself, but she wants to let Stephen know that he never has to hide anything from her. We got Greg tell telling Stephen about how no matter whatever he needs, whatever he wants, he'll do it. He'll help. He'll be there for Stephen. And then finally, the coup de gras. As we see a portal open, and from that portal comes Lion and Connie, with with Lion throwing Connie right onto Steven's snoot, and uh, we can see that all these words are getting through to him as the feral this is feral nature is starting to fade, and you can just see the the, the broken face of a scared little boy, who's just trying not to who's just trying not to let go, but Connie goes up to Steven and she just tells him Steven. You must have been so scared to show this side of you to us, but it's okay. We'll all be there for you. We'll all be, we'll all help you, and we're not going to leave you. At which point she at which point she goes on to say that she may not have Stephen's healing powers, but this is for him, and she gives him a, and she gives him a quick, a quick kiss, and that was it. The the dam breaks. And Stephen begins crying. The tears fall into the ocean, and well, even corrupted, the ma the magical power of those tears manage it, it seeps in. The whole area glows as Stephen cries, before the intent before everything is engulfed in white. And when it fades, st we sit, then we cut to Stephen as he wakes up. Everyone's look at everyone looking down at him, smiling as. Well, he's back to normal. With even the cluster holding out, holding out, and ho holding on to holding out, yeah, essentially holding on to Stephen and keeping him safe. Which, yeah, what I love to well, another little thing when as everyone was giving their whole spiel about how they'd be there for Stephen, even the cluster I was able to extend another hand and held Stephen's. It was sweet. And as everyone is smiling down at Stephen, you can still see tears in his eyes as he just immediately starts registering what's going on and. And the first thing he wants to, and, he, and it looks like he's about to have another breakdown as he tries to, as he looks like he's about to ask what happened, did he hurt anyone, what, what, what's happened, but before he can, before he can even get a sentence out, a lion comes up and just licks Stephen's face. And Stephen just hugs lion as he finally, finally, he has a well-deserved cry. And it's, 
beautiful. It's beautiful. But that, but that, but from there we get to the final episode of not just Steven Universe future, but Steven Universe as a whole, the future. And uh, this episode takes place months after the events of I Am My Monster. Steven has thankfully recovered well from his corruption, and apparently ever since said corruption, the gems have been keeping a closer eye on him, been a bit more protective of their of their boy, trying to make sure that he's feeling okay, actually doing well, ha he's happy, he's safe, he's, ba they're basically just, they're basically just going into mother, they're basically going into mother mode uh, times 10, and they're not stop, and basically they just want to keep Steven safe, but Apparently it's been helping because Steven's been doing a lot better. Hell, in a throw, in a in a in a, a kind of in a bit of a in a sideline kind of, so we reveal Steven reveals that apparently he's been going to therapy, and that and that's been as we can see in this episode, it's been helping out as Steven is now much closer to how he was at the beginning of Future versus how he was a few episodes ago. So Steven is clearly doing a lot better. Hell, the beginning of the episode actually starts with Steven as he's in the middle of an exercise and just seems to be happy, content, before, you know, the boombox he was exercising to gets destroyed. Never gonna finish that. But either way, the one who destroyed it was Connie, who was riding in on Lion, and basically the whole reason she's meeting up with Steven is, well, Steven's gonna be moving. Yeah, if the last, if the last, if the last 20 or so, if the last 19 episodes have proven anything to Steven, it's that he believes that he may need to move on himself. He wants to move away from Beach City, kind of live his life in other parts of the, of the, of the world, or at least the country. See what works for him, actually, actually expand and grow in places that he never experienced before, and so... He's kind of got a. He's kind of got this whole thing planned out. He, and he's planning on. And he's planning on moving out the next day, even. And he's told everybody. He even has an itinerary plan. He has. He has meetups that he's going 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 to go to. He's got things. He's gonna. He's gonna meet up with Connie in certain places. He'll go see Lars on some occasions. Essentially, Stephen has planned this all out very well. The only problem is, he hasn't told the gems. And I mean that, the, he, that those are the only ones he hasn't told. Like, he's told everyone else in Beat City. He's even told his dad. But the gems are a, a little bit of a no, are a bit of a touchy subject, to be sure. Especially since, like I said, they've been a lot more protective of him since he had his breakdown. As such, Steven is trying to figure out how to best break it to them. And, well, ice cream is the answer. Specifically, Cookie Cat. Which, yes, this is intentionally meant to mirror the very first episode of Steven Universe. They even do the stupid cookie cat theme song. I hated it just as much now as I did then. And I will never it will never be endearing. But either way, Steven makes his own cookie cat ice cream and presents it to the gems after they warp back in from a mission or from little homeschool. I don't know. My point is he's there to meet them when they come home, and he offers them the cookie cats, and well, they think, wow, that's really nice of you. And so they each have their own even they each have some of the cookie cat. Well, Garnet takes a bite of one of the ears and thinks it's good. Amethyst scarves hers down, and Pearl even even Pearl takes a very teensy tiny little bite. Just for Steven. It's Sweet, I like that. And so, as the gems start reciting the Cookie Cat theme song, well, they get to the part about how Cookie Cat had to leave his family behind, and the mood suddenly turns somber as Stephen finally lays bare what he wants to do. As he says that he had, is that as he talks about how Cookie Cat had to leave his home planet because he believed that maybe he felt he couldn't grow in other in ways that he he couldn't grow any further in his home environment. He needed to expand his horizons, and so. Stephen tells the gems that he's that he plans to move out. That he has an extensive itinerary planned. He still want, and he can still talk to his new therapist via 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 FaceTime. So otherwise, he does have everything planned out. And well, for and Stephen just essentially braces himself for the emotional outburst, but there is none. In fact, the gems take this very well. As they say, well, it's a, well, it's okay if that's what you want to do. Well, which even Steven's a little confused by, but they just say, no, 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 it's fine. All human adolescents eventually have to move on and move, and do their own, and do their own, and essentially find new avenues of life. So we incur we support you. And so the gems, after having say that, all go their separate ways, which confuses Steven. But maybe, maybe it's an isolated incident, right? No, no, it's not. If any, no, it's not. If anything, when Steve, because Steven ends up going to Little Homeworld and tells the B team, and they react very emotionally. Bismuth freaks the f 
walk out and just begs Steven not to leave, even offering him, even offering to build him a new home right next to Little Home World. Lapis tries telling Steven that he can't run him his problems because no matter where he'll go, because no matter where he'll go, he'll be there. She knows she's been there. And like, and Peridot, she's just crying. She's just breaking down crying. It's like, yeah, it's, it's this is what you would expect her emotional reaction. And it has a very tearful, heartfelt goodbye as Steven actually has prepared gifts for the B team as one by one, he each, he gives them something to help make the transition easier. He gives Peridot a Steven shirt because, well, he, because, well, she doesn't want a new Steven. So she, well, so he tells her, well, be the Steven you want us to be in the world. He gives Lapis art supplies because, well, she loves our art and she just, and she's just like awestruck by what she got. And as for Bismuth, well, the gift he gives her, the crystal gem flag as well. No one's more of a crystal gem than Bismuth. And as a result, the four just get into a massive group hug as all of them are just so, all of them are so sad to see Steven go. And even Steven cries as he just tells them he loves them and they tell him they love him too. It's, it's a sweet. And as Steven, and well, it turns out that other people are upset with seeing Steven go as, as he, as he leaves the B team, he walks through little homeworld and then a massive hole appears in one of the one of the buildings, and I mean, it like, it just explodes from the wall, and from the hole, we see Jasper, which, yeah, like I said, she's living a little home world now, and, uh, she, uh, which, I wonder what she does, I wonder, like, I would have loved to have seen what she does in little home world now that she's, uh, rehabilitated let's say that like what does she do does she train does she teach self-defense classes does she just go does she keep the perimeter safe from any intruders i want to know what jasper does here but i don't know we don't have it but there are no other episodes that tell us that explain this so it's just a mystery i guess but either way she's caught in wind of steven leaving and so she wants to go with steven at least to be his protector but steven says no he's got to do this himself and he can protect himself which jasper is not happy with the art with the counter argument but she has to comply with it it's a logical sound one and she does know that steven can defend himself so very reluctantly, she tells him farewell before she makes another before she slams her fist into the ground and then makes another hole back in the back the way she came. It's a way. It's kind of it's it's kind of touching and it's, it's kind of touching, sad and all around amusing. It's I like it. But even Steven, but even Stevens is a little surprised by this. Even Jasper is sad to see him go. So Stephen wonders maybe he just needs a do over with the crystal gem. So one by one he does meet back up with Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, and even gives them presents. Like he gives Amethyst his old game system and his collection of games. He gives Pearl his old ukulele. He even he even goes to Garnet and gives her a very personal present by stating that because he had. So so much fun planning Ruby and Sapphire's wedding, then maybe Garnet can plan his in the future. But it's still more of the same. The gems just treat all this like it's nothing. Just another Tuesday. Amethyst talks about how she's gonna how she's gonna wipe out Steven's high scores and his save files, because apparently one of his games has only one save file, which I know that pain. Uh Pearl. Pearl says that, oh, she loves the ukulele. She'll just store that away. And Garnet says that she'll keep the wedding plan safe and sound, which every single one of these confuses Steven. And you can see even it's it's starting to bug him a little bit as well as with every, every, with every kind of brush off, he's just getting more, a little bit more emotional and he tries not to cry in front of the gems, but it's clearly getting to him. At one point he even asked Garnet, you, you looked into the future and you saw everything was going to be fine, right? But Garnet once again just says, no, it's fine. Everybody's got to move on. And again, they all just kind of leave Steven one by one. As such, later we see Steven as he's packing up with his dad and he tells, he talks to his dad about all this and he admits that he kind of wanted them to be a little emotional, even if that's a little petty of him. But Garnet says that, but Greg says that maybe that they're just trying to be supportive and Steven has a right to have the emotions he does, even petty ones. So, uh, so he tells Steven, essentially he just tells Steven not to worry about it. However, Steven also has a gift for his dad and that gift... His old room. Basically, if Steven's going to be on the road, his old room's going to be vacant. So why not let his dad live there? He even puts up a picture of that or of the of that singer who sang the Mr. Universe song. And while at first Greg's like, I don't know, this seems a little ritzy for me. Steven's able to win him over by telling him to try out the bed, which. Considering Greg is rich, I think that this place should have been the downgrade. But hey, 
I guess he just loves his van too much. Whatever. My point, but whatever. Greg does take the gift, and he even admits that he does kind of like the karmic, the karmic balance that comes from Stephen moving away and Greg kind of and Greg and Greg settling down. So either way, it cuts to the next morning as we see Stephen as he's saying his goodbyes to everyone. He he and Connie kiss goodbye, which it's a full kiss on the lips. So it's a fit. It's oh yeah, it's clear that they are very much officially a couple now. So yes. He gives his dad a he gives his dad a hug goodbye, and one by one he says his goodbyes to the gems who tell them who pretty much wish him good luck, tell him tell him that they tell him that they think it'll be fine, yada yada yada, all that nice for all that nice formal goodbye stuff. And so Stephen gets into the Don die and slowly begins driving away as he as he passes as he goes down the beach. The music starts playing. He just keeps looking in his rearview mirror, seeing everyone waving him goodbye, and so he just keeps watching and watching and watching and watching and watching until they're finally out of view before he before he just puts on the brakes and then backs right the hell up and parks right in front of the gems and as he and then pretty much just yells at them with tears in his eyes what is wrong with you aren't you sad to see me go and yeah the gems just break down crying yeah it turns out they have been very emotional about this whole thing they don't want steven to go they love steven but like Greg said, they were trying to be strong for him. And the instant that this comes out, Steven gets out of the car and all four of them just ha and just hug. And yeah. And yeah, like the B team before them, the main, the A team talk about how all the gifts they have are precious. Like Amethyst was kidding when she said she'd erase Steven's save files. Pearl says that the only that she'll play the ukulele all, that will be the uh, that the only the ukulele will be the only thing she plays. Even Garnet says that she's already planned at least three hundred plus we versions of Steven's wedding. But the, ultimately, the reason why the gems were being as stalwart as they was was because Garnet did peek a little into Steven's future. And one of the possibilities of this was that if Steven saw how emotional his departure would be, then he wouldn't go. And so she, and so like Steven suspected, Garnet did tell the other Crystal Gems that about about this, and so they tried to maintain their composure because they didn't want to stand in Steven's way. But and by that same token, they she also saw a myriad of possibilities for Steven's future. He saw, she saw him doing so many new and unique things. But no matter where he goes, no matter where he settles down, no matter what he does. The crystal gems will always be a part of his life. They'll always come to see him, to visit, to talk, to listen, to just be there. And it's it's heartwarming. It's sweet. And basically, with that bit of reassurance, Stephen and them have one final goodbye before Stephen gets back into his car and drives with the with the the gems once more waving goodbye, tears still in their eyes. And well, as Garnet gives him a warning to check his rear left tire, just you know, be safe. Well. We get a song playing over the over the la over the ending, a sweet song, a quiet song, and a beautiful song called "Being Human." As we see Stephen leaving Beach City, and we see a bunch of Beach City denizens holding up a sign, set pretty much saying goodbye to Stephen. They're all waving happily as we see Stephen driving away. We also see that Onion stole his cheeseburger backpack, the asshole. And we see gems walking the streets with humans. We see that pumpkin. We see that pumpkin apparently has friends now. As there, as a pair, as we see other gourds brought to life. As just Stephen drives by, and well, St Stephen finally bids Beach City goodbye. And the final shot of the episode. Believe it, yes, believe it or not, it's actually the final shot that we've been seeing in the credits of every episode of Steven Universe Future. Steven driving away from Beach City, going off to, well, the next chapter of his life. A chapter that we as the audience will not be seeing. This is his story now, and quite frankly, it's his own, it's, and whatever, whatever tale he tells from here on out, it'll only be for him. And that, my friends is the ending of Steven Universe Future. So, let's get into my thoughts on these episodes. Firstly, let's get into I Am My Monster. Just like how at the end of, just like how the ending of Everything's Fine really hit a chord for me with how realistic it portrayed Steven's breakdown and just kind of how he laid bare all of his problems to the Crystal Gems and his friends and family. The I Am, I Am My Monster very much hits the emotional beat in how it feels when you're in that mindset, especially with so showcasing Steven as well, a literal monster. Because 
when you're when you hit that low point, if when you hit to that that when you get to, when your mental health is so negative that you essentially start damning yourself, start blaming yourself, and start looking at every little thing you've done and using that to measure up your worth, it hurts. It hurts so much, and yes, it can make you feel like a monster. That. If, that, that basically, if you think that if everyone saw you like this, if everyone saw all your little demons made bare, they would hate you. They would want nothing to do with you, and you would not blame them. You would think you deserved that, and you would keep making yourself believe that. Eventually, you'd become your own worst enemy. No one would need to beat you down because you'd be doing all the work for them. And eventually, when it hits your breaking point, it can feel like you're just alone, just shattered, angry, like you want to scream. And quite frankly, seeing Steven actually take that pain and have his powers actually externalize it in the form of him turning into this fucking giant pink kaiju, it, I think, works. And... I like how, and I, and the thing is, even while corrupted, you can see that Steven still hates himself. Like going back to when Steven was a, was just having his went on his quote unquote rampage. Most of his attacks were almost unintentional. Like when he, like when he was, when like when he, like I said, when he slammed himself into the cliff, into the cliff side of the of the temple, he was not trying to cause destruction. It was more like he was trying to hurt himself. He slammed his face right into it. He was just holding on to dear life as he was trying to crawl around it. You could tell this was basically a kid. Like, despite the the monstrous look, the body language suggested someone who looked like they were just trying to crawl away, run, hide, and it just you could. It, it feels like someone who's if it, 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 like at its core, it feel it felt like someone who was just trying to run away and just essentially seclude themselves away from everything and everyone. Now, again, I don't know if that was the full case because like because as we've seen with corrupted gems, their higher brain function typically does not go the way that they that what normal that normal creatures brain function would go. It is essentially very animalistic. So for all I know, for all I know, monster Steven might have just been doing what he was doing out, out of base instinct, just trying to keep going around and get rid of any perceived threats, which could be a very realistic outcome. But at the same time, this is still Steven, and considering that the emotional state that led him to becoming a monster was his own self-loathing and and him of having an emotional breakdown, it may. I think it would make sense why that why that kind why him essentially punishing himself would still be ingrained up here. It essentially be something. Basically, every part of part of his his functions wouldn't just be about survival. It would be about punishing himself. And in a way, we do see that. And well, I like the tension that's the, that kind of goes throughout. I am my monster, especially since. Well, the key to fixing Steven would be to get through to his human side, to the core of who he is, and allow that to come out. Allow him to essentially calm down, get the essentially bring out his human side. But the problem is, the one person who would be able to do that is Steven. And, well, none of the gems really know what to do. None of them know how to help Steven right now. And many of them are just freaking out over the fact that they let him get this bad in the first place. Like I said, when Am like I said, Amethyst is one of the people who is angry that she didn't see the signs when she could have. The diamonds are blaming themselves because they're partially responsible for Steven going through all that trauma, if not entirely responsible. Even Spinel is angry at herself. Basically, everyone is sad because they're seeing this boy that they love and care about who's helped them through so much pain and turmoil now just reduced to this thing this thing that is to, uh, that's only real mindset is to cause destruction and hurt himself that is his that is his only bit that is all he wants that is all he can think about and none of them know what they can do to help him but they want to help him and their guilt over not being able to help them is paralyzing them and it's 
it's very it hurts it very much hurts just seeing them all suffering all see, just seeing them all suffering and crying because none of them know what to do none of them know how to fix him none of them know how to let steven know that he is still a good person that he doesn't need that he doesn't need to keep beating himself up over this but when they do have the solution when they do manage to get through to steven It's beautiful. I openly admit, when I rewatched this episode for this vlog, when I got to the scene where everyone just rushed at Steven and just embraced him in a group hug and let him know that they would be there for him, that they would help him, that they could that they would do whatever they that they do that they'd do whatever Steven needed to help keep to help keep to help him kind of calm down to feel comfortable, to feel safe again. I cried. I shed a couple tears. It's just... You... When you're in that mindset, when you're just beating yourself up, and, th and the only words that go through your head are, you're a bad person, you deserve nothing, a few kind words from people you love and care about are enough to help br bring you back up. And it, it doesn't fix the problems all the time. It doesn't like make the issues that got you to that thing, that got you to that state, go away. But it makes it easier to deal with them. And when you're re and that re that bit of reassurance from people that you trust, people that you want to keep safe, it, it, does more than you can possibly imagine. And the way and seeing the gems tell Steven that no matter what he what he's thinking, no matter what he's telling himself, no matter how what what guilt is eating away at him, no matter what anger he feels towards himself, whatever it is he's going through, they'll always be there for him because they love him and they'll want to be there for him. He's been there for them. He's done so much to help them. He's been, he's helped them become he's done so much to make them better people and they want to return the favor and they'll keep wanting to return the favor because steven is that much of an important person to them he's not just this thing he's not just the the group's assigned psychiatrist he's someone they care about he's their friend he's their family he's so he's the heart of their group and if something is eating away at him if something is troubling him if he feels like he's if he feels guilty or he feels angry or he feels like he want or he feels like he's gonna break down they'll help him if he falls apart they'll help him pick up the pieces if he's beating himself up they'll get if he's beating himself up they'll calm him down if he's if he's if he's if he wants to scream they'll let, if, he, if he wants to scream at something they'll let him scream at it they'll let him scream at them he'll point is Whatever he needs, they'll do it because they want Steven to be safe and happy. And it's, it's beautiful. Just the sentiment, the way it ha the way they, the way they showcase it, it's, it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. And I, I just, I, it was just a good scene. A really damn good scene. Now, and quite frankly, the way the episode ended with Steven just resting in with the cl on the cluster's hand while everyone is around him, not saying a word, just being there as Steven finally has his cry, which, like I said, he more than deserved at this point. I think it's and it's a good way to end the episode. It's a good way to end the episode. Just give him a moment to register it, and it's it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful ending to the episode. Now, with all this said, do I think that the, the I Am I Monster is perfect? No, I'm not. I'm not. What I I love it for what it does right. Do not misunderstand. The the way they should the way the emotional connections between Stephen and his friend and the and the gems his friend his friends and his family, it's beautiful. 
And I think that, and quite frankly, I think that's a good way of help of show of essentially showcasing what someone in that position needs. It's a good way, like essentially, sh essentially, it means that even if you can't like fix the issues that are playing them up here, sometimes just support is enough. It's enough to help get someone out of it. Let this, just let someone know I'm here, and I'm I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. I like that. That's beautiful. So what holds the episode back in my? So what holds the episode back for me? Well, quite frankly, it feels like this could have been bigger, believe it or not. Like, don't misunderstand. <clears throat> the fact that Steven's emotional state, emotional and mental state was so bad that he essentially became corrupted is something to worry about. And that was something, and they at least, and the, they do at least show the grandiosity. Like when the B team arrives on the scene and we just see this big hulking monstrosity on the beach just wandering around while the gems are just standing awestruck not knowing what to do. That immediately creates a sense of, oh shit. It made even worse by the fact when, when the B team learns that that thing is Steven. But by that same token, by that same token, it also feels lesser. Now, to be fair, that, not to be fair, the gems, like, it's still an 11 minute episode, so you still gotta get through all the emotional beats in a timely fashion without making it feel rushed. And the emotional beats, they hit when they hit the right spots. They do hit the very, they do hit everything, they do hit everything well. But the thing is, we don't really get a lot of chances to see Kaiju Steven do anything as a monster. He's mostly just contained to the beach, and, 90, and essentially 90% of this time that he's corrupted, he's mostly contained, which. Again, it's smart of the gems to do, as we know Steven, and if he learned he hurt someone like this, that would probably make him go that would probably make him feel even worse. So they at least got on got on top of that. But we don't really see him do a lot as a monster. And we they do it, like I said, it's emphasized and rightfully so, that he needs to be stopped and returned back to normal as quickly as possible. But again, it also because they were able to solve this solve this problem in a very timely fashion, it's uh there's not really a lot of room to actually see him do anything like this. And, uh, I won't lie. While I do like the emotional bits in the episode, and they hit the right sweet spot, and like I said, the episode made me fucking cry on this rewatch, I still admit there's a little bit, there's a little inner boy in my, in here that's just sitting in, a, in his corner going, I wanted to see things explode. Which... Yeah, I, I can't deny I would have liked to have seen more action with Monster Steven, but, and quite fr and I'll, so, and the fact that they're able to solve the problem so quickly does kind of, be, does kind of make me go, oh man, I should, oh man, I could, oh man, all that build up for nothing. But again, I think for what the episode did right, with the build, with showcasing how they solve the problem and showcasing how, what the source, the, where the root of the problem is, I think it works. And before I move on to the future, I do have to kind of bring up a common criticism that's brought up with this episode. Namely, how people kind of criticize how, oh, all of Steven's problems were solved with a hug. Which I respond with, no, they weren't. They were not solved with a hug. The very least, like, the thing is, people see, mis misinterpret the ending of this episode to mean that Steven was, that all that everyone had to do was give Steven a hug and all of his problems were solved forever, once and for all. Except... No, they weren't. They were not solved. That was the short-term solution. And it worked. But, if they want to make sure that it doesn't happen again, then there are still going to need to be long-term solutions. Hell, the fact that when Steven returns back to normal, the first thing he tried to do was ask if he did it, if he hurt anyone, and um, finally break down crying when he hugged Lion... It showcases that the problems are still there. If he if they, if he was back to normal, he wouldn't be crying like that. Cause the crying he cause when he cries, it's not of it's not a it's not a oh I'm happy to see everyone cry. It's a I'm it's an I've been holding this shit in for a while and I need to let it out cry. It's and you can really feel that when he when and you can really feel that when he lets it all out. This is basically with someone who's been feeling like they've been on the edge for so long who's finally being getting getting the chance to let it out in a very calm and comfortable environment, not being judged, just knowing that these people are there for him and he's just letting it all out to bed. And he's just letting it all out. It's, it's a good cry. It's a good cry. But my point—that's not my point. My point is, 
I disagree with the criticism of oh they solved all that oh they fixed everything and they fixed everything with a hug. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't solve all of Steven's problems with a hug. They just stopped that episode. They calmed Steven down and were able to bring him to a stable state of mind by essentially just lessening the emotions as a friend of mine once said sometimes you just need a reminder of how good a person you are to help get you back that's to get you back to something stable but the thing is that doesn't mean the issues that got you to that point are just gone forever they're still there it's just that for this particular instance they 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 the, his steven's friends and family were able to stop them from overwhelming him as such I disagree with the crit. Like I said, I disagree with the criticism of oh they solved this problem with a hug. No, they didn't. Again, it was just a short-term solution, and the fact that still Steven still needs to see a therapist means that there's still that Steven has to work on this in the long term as well. So, yeah, I disagree with that. But like I said, I do think the episode is still I think is still an all enjoy is still all right. I think it I think it deals with the emotional bits very well. I love how they I love the I love how. The, I lo basically, feel, like I said, it feels very realistic, and the emotions feel, and the emotion felt feels so raw and and strong, and all feel like all feel. Well, I guess I have to say it again. Real. They all feel very human, and they all feel very human, relatable, and how they ultimately bring it down is just. It's just it just hits such a sweet spot, and but the fact that it ends with Steven just crying and hit crying it crying, surrounded by all of his friends and family, it's just. It hits right here, and I and I enjoy that. As for the future, this isn't. This is kind of the. Uh, this episode, I think, is the epitome of the of uh, the end. Doesn't come with a bang, but with a whimper, because that's how the show ends. It doesn't end with a big climactic battle. It doesn't end with with a big with a giant explosion. It ends with Steven moving on, and I, quite frankly. I think that that's a good way of ending the show. And don't get me wrong; it's not a. It, don't get me wrong; I can understand why people would disagree with that sentiment, and I kind of and I do sympathize with it, and I do sympathize with it somewhat. After all, after everything that Steven has gone through and everything that's been happening throughout Steven Universe future, you would think that the ending would be a bit louder, so to speak, would have more gravitas to it, would have so much, would be able to wrap everything all up in a big bow, right? Well. No, well, the, the same thing is, though, I kind of like that this is where we kind of end things. Essentially, we finally see Steven as he's ready to move on with his life. Basic throughout the entirety of both Steven Universe and Steven Universe Future, we've been seeing Steven, well, keep fighting, so to speak. Even after he saved the universe, he was the head of little homeschool. He was the head of little homeschool and tried to essentially help continue giving gems a place in the universe that helped them, you know, stabilize. It's just that ha it's just that when he got to the little graduation with uh, with the off colors, he began realizing that maybe this job wasn't best suited for him and he wanted to find something else. And part of the problem part of the reason why he was having his emotional breakdown was cuz he didn't really know what else he could do. And so and so, basically, now that we see Steven in a more stable state of mind, well, it allows him to kind of discover that for himself. Actually want to go off and do something. And, again, consider I think what makes it work, in my opinion, is that we saw Steven get to the brink of destruction. We saw him go to the edge and almost fall over. So seeing him be able to move on with his life, to be able to find, essentially find what makes him him what he wants to do with his life where he wants to settle down i think it's actually really nice and i admit when i re and i admit back when i first got the the complete series collection and i got to be and i got to the and i got to the the to the the future episode i it kind of felt it kind of left it kind of left me shook a little mostly because after mostly because i kind of registered that yeah Steven did need to grow up. He did need to move on because as we've as we've shown throughout Steven Universe, change is a part of life. Things always change. Things are going to stay the same in some areas, but things will always change. Well, ha it happened in Steven Universe. It happened in Steven Universe Future. People discovered new things about themselves, and if they wanted to keep discovering new things, then they needed to go off and do their own thing. Sometimes someone can find themselves in a place they feel comfortable in and, can, and feel like they can continue doing for the rest of their life. Other times, they want to try something new and kind of re find, find new experiences. That doesn't mean, And that doesn't mean that they hate 
hate the old experiences, it means that they just feel like they've done everything they can there. And in the case of Steven, he feels like he doesn't need to be here anymore. He's fought the battles. He's saved the universe. He's helped he's helped to stay he's helped take down an entire empire that was that was dedicated to subjugating and controlling all these different planets and managed to reform a good chunk of it into something actually kind and stable and actually working for the betterment of and working for the betterment of both their society and the universe steven has done his part and quite frankly he deserves a break i think that that's a, and i think that the ending with steven going off and wanting to discover this new part of him I think it's nice, especially if you've watched the entirety of Steven Universe, seen him grow up from this naive 13-year-old kid who was more, who was uh, who in the first episode was more upset by the fact that his favorite ice cream sandwich discontinued rather than uh, rather than monsters, who was so excited to be a part of the team, who who's who would constantly make mistakes or mess up and do silly little stupid things because he didn't know what he was doing, but he wanted to so desperately be a part of it. And then little by little you saw him grow up and then little by little you saw that innocent veneer just slide away as the reality of his job became more and more apparent to him and so little by little you saw you saw him become a different person someone more mature someone dealing with someone dealing with these different issues someone who want but at the end of the day the drive to help people never left him he wanted to keep doing things for other people he kept wanting to do he kept wanting to help in any way he can he he, he turned which he did he turned and he made new friends he turned enemies into allies he saved the universe and well he deserves a break and so seeing him go off to do his own thing not being weighed down not being not feeling like he has to help everyone or be the, or ha or need to be uh, or need to be some ever someone else's hero it's i think it's a nice i think it's an as a character as an ending for his character i like it and i do i like it it's be again i think it's a beautiful ending and Quite frankly, I liked seeing Steven say goodbye to the Crystal Gems. Like the Crystal Gems, it, we've been with Steven through every step of his journey. Saw him grow up. Saw him deal with all these different hardships, both externally and internally. Saw him make new friends, battle new enemies, fight monsters, been to different worlds. But now he's living his own life and doing his own thing. But we're not going to be there with him anymore. We're not going to see where this new path takes him. We're not going to see how he recovers or with his therapy. We're not going to see if he if any of his previous threats try tracking him down. We're just our part is done. We've been there for Steven through a through a, a lot of the formative years and he doesn't he doesn't need the crystal gems or us anymore. He's doing his own thing and while we wish him the best, there's also a part of us that wants him back. And it's I like it, and I I think what also helps in that regard is seeing as 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 with as Stephen leaves Beach City, we see gems and humans just kind of walking around doing their own thing, and we see that these are the fruits of Stephen's labor, and it's it's not it's helps show that while Stephen may not be around anymore, his presence is going to be felt by everybody because if it wasn't for him, none of this would be possible. It's a really beautiful ending, and I I think it works. It really does work. And on top of that, if I could. On top of that, even without even without the finale stuff, the stuff with Steven and the, the Steven and, the, and him trying to say goodbye to the Crystal Gems, it's adorable. It's sweet, sad, but also kind of funny. I love the different varied reactions we have from the gems. Like with the B team, I love how I love how Bismuth is the one that tries bargaining with Steven and begging him not to leave. I like that Lapis tries giving him a talking to about how he needs to confront his issues. I like how Paradox is the most emotional out of them, considering how Considering how emotionally distant she was when Steven first met her. I like how, I like Steven just getting a little bit more upset that the traditional gems aren't reacting. Which, you can tell Garnet's trying to hide it when, when Steven went to go talk to her about, you know, her planning his wedding. She said, well, bust my bridges if it isn't Steven Universe. Like, Garnet doesn't say that. Something's not right. I like that. It's actually enjoyable. So, at the very least, I do like that they still try slipping in some gags in there. It helps remind you that you're still watching this, that this is still 
Steven Universe. And even if they're... De and while we may be dealing with a bunch of emotional stuff, there's... We still can have some laughs in there. Hell, I love that... I, hell, hell, I love that immediately before we get to the big emotional goodbye between Steven and the Gems, we just have, like, a, essentially is a record break as the music cuts out as Steven backs his car. It's like, what's wrong with you? And, I, and like, Gems all just break down. It's It makes you laugh, but then it immediately makes you smile when you see them all just hugging and crying. It's adorable. I love it. It's just... At the end of the day... I think the final episode of Steven Universe Future, while not a grand episode, and I admit there could be that if you wanted to, you probably could find better ways to end the series. I think as a character ending for Steven and his journey and everything that he's gone through, I think it's a great way to end the show. It's a great way to close everything out with him. For him to essentially just move on with his life, find a new purpose, do his own thing while still being connected to all of his friends and family. Being reassured that no matter where he goes, no matter what he does, no matter where he settles down, they'll always be there for him. And it's... it's sweet. I like it. Which again, is which again further emphasized that he did... that, what is, what, that his battle mattered. Well, get, we see... Get, we see the... We see everyone around. We see, like I said, when we, he's leaving Beach City, we see everyone saying, we see everyone just waving goodbye to him. We see gems walking with humans. We see Pumpkin and the Gourds. Again, Steven has clearly made a difference and kind of reflect, seeing him leaving all that and reflecting on on everything that's happened, I think it's a, I think it's a very heartwarming and touching way to end it. And like with Steven and the gems, it feels like you're saying goodbye to an old friend as he, as he leaves Beach City. And... I can't, it's just sweet, and I love it, so. Yeah, but yeah, those are my thoughts on the episodes, and well, since this is the last episode of the Steven Universe Retrospectives, you know, an hour, you know, and the video's already an hour, I should give my thoughts on Steven Universe as a whole, and, well, I love it. I love this show. It's a very good show. It's not a perfect show. I will not deny that. It's not always perfect like if you really stop and think about the lore with steven universe and how some things about how the show operate you can scratch your head and ask some very obvious questions like for example who like for example if gems don't if gems don't have if gems are a gen if gems are supposed to be a gender then why do they use she her pronouns and even know what he him pronouns are if they're just if they're just meant to all be the same gender then they really shouldn't have concepts of, of separate genders that's kind of strange like why would they be, why would they have a mo why would they feel affection for one another if this is their whole life which i guess you can make the argument that because they're so secluded they never had a chance to explore those emotions again you can poke holes in certain bits of the lore anywhere you want and maybe and honestly you'd probably be justified in that regard there are some things that when you stop and think about the lore too much it can be confusing and i'm not gonna pretend it isn't but for me and hell even some things about the show can easily be mocked there is a reason why people there's a reason why people keep talking about why when people talk about how steven would solve a problem versus someone else would solve a problem they use that pit that pit that that image of steven the crying and having like a wall of text whereas someone's just looking angry and ready to kick ass like again you can make the argument that something that maybe the show solves its problems too much by using the power of friendship and all that stuff which I can kind of get, which I kind of get. Sometimes it is, it is cathartic to see some, to see the bad person get punched in the face. And I won't deny, it's even if you want to solve everything with peace, that doesn't mean everyone wants to respond to peace. So sometimes, the, so sometimes reforms can feel a little forced. Like I said, the diamonds all were one of those were, were characters that never really felt like they fully reformed to me. Like I never really felt like that they were ever fully good guys that they're always it felt like they're always kind of forcing themselves to do the nice things they did which again you could tell in some way like i said and you could tell in some regard that they did like what they were doing but you could still tell that if steve if steven wasn't the one that pushed them in this direction they would still be doing the things they were doing and the only reason they keep walking down this path is because they want to is because they want to be a part of steven's life and if they try being the way they were before steven want nothing to do with them and they don't like that so again there are some things that you can easily make fun of and make make fun of and poke holes in. There are like again, sometimes it feels like the like it just is it doesn't feel it doesn't mean it's always perfect. Hell, even the beginning of the show is one of those it's it's an example of a show taking time to find its legs. If you actually go and watch the beginning of Steven Universe, it's uh 
it doesn't really hit the same it doesn't really hit that same it doesn't really hit its stride in the it doesn't really always hit its stride which makes sense it's the first season the first season of any series is not going to be its best cuz even cuz at the beginning of every series they're all they're finding their legs they're trying to figure out what they want to do with the, what they want to do and they're still refining the formula and Steven Universe was no different in the beginning of the show there it felt a lot more silly cartoony felt a lot more like it was more for little kids and felt more inane and uh, and all over the map like it didn't really feel like it didn't really hit the it didn't really feel like the big emotional roller coaster that it would become we didn't really deal with all the bit with all the with all the traumatic emotional bits that we see that, that we saw the gems tackle as the show went on though there were hints of it it's just that it takes a while for you to get to the point where to get to that more mature spot if that makes any sense it takes a while for it to hit its stride and really get into the meat and potatoes of what makes the show great it really takes it does take its time and quite frankly while I am aware that there are certain individuals on the internet who absolutely loathe this show and like to liken it as allegory for a certain group of people who I will not be repeating in this video because I have good taste and I am a decent and I'm trying to be a decent fucking human being. I think that those things are very much unjustified because when it comes, but because at the end of the day, what I do love about Steven Universe is that is. While I like the lore, well, as well I do like the lore and seeing the gems and seeing all these new and unique things they create, what really keeps you invested in this story is, well, the emotions, the lessons, the emo the 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 the, the life basically the arcs that these characters go through, the characters themselves. All of these things are un all of these things really know how to keep you invested in the story and. I think it always works, and I think that's what the, that's what really keeps everything grounded. Of course, you got plenty of other stuff to keep you grounded because, like I said, the show as it gets along does manage to hit its stride, both in the more serious bits and the more lighthearted bits. The show tended to be the, t the show did know how to be comedic when it wanted to be, and there were plenty of moments, even in serious episodes, where they could get a laugh out of me, like some like when like see like how with how deadpan certain characters could be, like Garnet, one of my favorite gags in the show was when Steven and Connie were still in the early phases of their friendship and Connie's parents were oblivious to Steven and all of his weirdness and so they had and so Connie tried hit and so when Connie's mom wanted to talk to Steven's mom he ha they handed it to Garnet it's like oh no this is mom universe no the kids are playing swords I'm sorry playing with swords oh no they're bleeding they're dead don't call me again Jacob's yeah, like I'm sorry I panicked that I don't know that, that that's one of my favorite gags of the show just the deadpan reaction throughout the whole thing and I love it there's just like there is still some jit like a like amethyst and her go and her goofy antics are fun pearl being anal retentive can be can be fun to poke fun at when you have her as a straight man even with even with the b team you got so with paradon and how hyperactive she can be when she tried to be the center of attention or lapis as she was kind of the deadpan to her even bismuth when she finally became a member because she could be the most emotional and i loved it there is still, or even Steven. Steven's all, so like, sometimes Steven's goofy and sometimes he's the normal one. There is humor to be found in the show, but at the same time, there, like I said, it also deals with some very immature emotional issues. All of the gems, in some regard, have something they needed to work through, whether it be something more in your face or something a little bit more subtle. Sorry, Chini once again jumped on the bed. And seeing them deal with these issues was honestly a very large part of Steven Universe's show. And I don't just mean them, I mean, also mean Steven. Steven. Hell, if we want to get into character arcs, every character in Steven Universe kind of dealt with their own arc. I'm not going to go into every single one because a lot of the characters' arcs mostly were usually self-contained stories, like with Buck Dewey and how he wanted and how he was making fun of Steven's dad and Steven had to give him a taste of his own medicine and made him realize... Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. Or the stuff with sour cream and his relationship with his douchebag of a dad, Marty! Like, that... Again, those are good. That's good stuff, but it's mostly self-contained. And if I'm being honest, the stuff with the the stuff with the townies, as I'm gonna call them, always felt like the lesser part of the show. In fact, let's give that as another flaw to the show. While I don't think the episodes with the, the with the residents of Beach City were bad episodes by any means, 
it also feels like they're lesser when you actually bring in the whole cosmic space aspect of Steven Universe. When you actually introduce the whole concept of the gem species, the gem war of Steven's mom and all that other stuff, it feels like that's big, that that is something that should be having more focus than the stuff on Earth. Now, I'm not going to say that the stuff on Earth is unnecessary because you do need to actually get to know these people in order to actually give a shit about them. Like, if I, like, if something, like, if we have had a random alien vessel attacking Earth and we had no idea who anyone in Beach City was, then why would we give a shit about any of them? Like, why should I give a damn about the guy who runs the who runs the pizza place? I don't know who this guy is and I don't give a shit about him. But the fact that they took episodes to get to know the people who worked there and actually deal with some of the issues that they were dealing with, it gives us a better more it gives us a more a better understanding of them and thus makes them like them more. Even now <clears throat> Even characters that give us the willies, like Onion, got time to got time to shine and help develop their characters. But no, that doesn't mean all the characters are likable. <coughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry, kind of dealing with a cough there. <coughs> but yeah, but again, when it came down to compare, but again, well, that stuff was not inherently bad, and I would even say it's uh, that stuff was good compared to the stuff with the gems and the war and the and, and the home world and all that stuff. It felt lesser, and while I didn't hate any episodes that dealt with the townies, that dealt with townies, they always felt like they always felt like they were a distraction more than what should have been the main focus. And uh, yeah, and yeah, it did drag the show down a little in terms of pacing. And if I which if I want to get into another meta thing that definitely could kill interest in the show. The time frame between episodes. You wouldn't have noticed that from how I've been doing these vlogs, but Steven Universe had a lot of hiatuses between episodes. Basically, at several points in time, the, they would the Cartoon Network would release a handful of episodes and then just stop. Like just stop dead in their tracks, and then we don't, and basically everyone would be wondering where's the next episode, where's the next episode, and then oh they probably released another episode there, or, or a handful of episodes there, or maybe do one here, and so on and so forth. And they would do this, and they would do this for a while. And basically, the wait time between episodes got longer. It was always very long to the point where, when the new set of episodes came out, the show, the interest in the show almost in would almost die. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say almost that because there was always dedicated fans, myself included, who were always waiting eagerly for these shows. Hell, whenever there was a leak online, fan, there would be plenty of fans who would want to flock to it, while other fans would want to, you know, want to watch it on TV, which. I understand, which I under, which again all that's uh, which again uh, both camps I can understand though in the buffet, though quite frank though I do though quite frankly it is probably better to wait and watch it on the show because you want to actually support the people who make this shit. It's part of the reason why I got the DVD because I want to support this show and actually make sure the people who make it are getting their money's worth. But ultimately, the show it's but ultimately when it came down to when it came down to scheduling. Steven Universe suffered, and the fact that it even made it as far as it did with the hand that Cartoon Network dealt it, it's a miracle. It's a fucking miracle, seriously. Apparently, if you look up the stories of the people who worked on the show, apparently higher upper management was just did not like, did not really, did not work with them very well. And even so, like, the Steven bombs that they would release, where they would release, like, a week's, week, a week's worth of episodes, that was not the Crew Universe's idea. That was Cartoon Network trying to push something, and the Crew Universe didn't like it, but the people on High Order it so they had to comply whether they wanted to or not so ultimately their hands were kind of tied in that regard but again it's a very much a meta it's a very much a meta problem with the show which the contents of the show itself i don't think are fully affected by that unless you're watching it live when it was on tv like me and many other fans but ultimately it was still a thing that definitely hurt the show in some regard with that said though what with that said, though, the show itself, I think, still is strong. And even, hell, even when it encountered problems in terms of pacing, like with the finale of the, like with the finale, I still think it tried to make it work. I'm never going to, like, I'm never going to pretend that the finale to the original Steven Universe was not rushed, because it was. It very much felt rushed, because, like I said, Cartoon Network threat, like, like, like I said, Cart like, the, the crew universe wanted to have a wedding between Ruby and Sapphire, two characters that essentially identify as female, uh, which means this would be, for all intents and purposes, a lesbian wedding. And Cartoon Network heard about this and said, do that and your show's canceled. Well, they did it, and the show got canceled, so they had to wrap up any loose 
thread, any impo big loose threads that they could before the show got the kibosh. But the only reason that they got well, we got material afterwards is because the is because one one of the creators of the show managed to talk Cartoon Network into at least giving them a stay of execution. And so as a result, we got Steven Universe the movie and Steven Universe Future, which I'm still grateful for those existence. It's just that it's clear that when you watch the original show, they very much had to they were pretty much operating on crunch time and had to just squeeze in as many plot elements as they could before Cartoon Network told them you're out. So yeah, the show definitely had some behind the scenes stuff that hurt it in the long run and definitely could but definitely kind of and definitely could make things worse. Hell, if you want to get even more technical, let's talk about Steven Universe Future and my thoughts on that show. Quite frankly, I do like Steven Universe Future. As I mentioned throughout these vlogs, Steven Universe Future I think is a great show that details that de that brings awareness to and details very well the challenges of, me of the challenges of mental health problems, de of dealing with these emotional issues how they can affect someone what the best ways that you have to deal what how how the best ways that you the way that you and your loved ones can deal with it and what avenues you can take and when you can what avenues you can take and explore and by showcasing it in such a realistic fashion i think it's a great way of, of raising awareness for it and making people more aware of these signs and being able to offer a helping hand to those who need it the problem with steven universe future however is that it also feels a little rushed at times and I won't deny, as an epilogue to a series to Steven Universe Future, it doesn't really do a good job at wrapping everything up. It's a good ending for Steven. Do not misunderstand. As a char like, it does a great job of wrapping up the loose ends with Steve with Steven Universe as a character, which that's what, the, which honestly makes sense. The show is called Steven Universe, so the thing should be about him. It's just that when you're, it's a, part of the reason why people like me, like uh, that some people were invested in the show was also the lore and the stories and learning how things operated. And we, and like Steven, we learned about these things and how, how and, uh, we learned about all these new aspects of this world, expanded on it, the, how the gem hierarchy worked, what Steven's mom was really like, all the challenges that she went through. And like St Steven, we were drawn into this world and wanted to see how it developed or developed with him. So the fact that we didn't essentially get all these major plot elements and essentially wrapped up and answered, it feels like it's a letdown. And I, if I can give my own problem, if I can get, state my own complaints, one of the things that I was really wanting to find the answer to was where the diamonds came from. Because we know how gems are typically made. You have an injector. They put something in the ground. That thing absorbs all the nutrients that surrounding the ground and then poop out pops a gem that at least we know how that in that regard we know how gems are made and hell for some gems they have to be born under certain special circumstances like pearls essentially had to be grown like a regular pearl and once they're and even once a pearl is ready they have to be customized for their owner before they can take a before they can take a form but with that but again that only is about the those are the grunt soldiers in the gem empire what about the leaders? What about Pink Diamond, Yellow Diamond, Blue Diamond, White Diamond? Where did they come from? Clearly, they're like they're well, they're clearly bigger and more powerful than as your standard gem. They're still gems. Their bodies are still hard light holograms. They can still if you hit them hard enough, they will poof and eventually reform. So they're and if you shatter their gems, they will die. So clearly they are very so clearly they came from somewhere. Did they form naturally or did someone make them? Do they have a grander purpose or are they just ran or did they just or did they just appear or are they just randomized? I wanted to know where they came from. I wanted to know the origin of of the gem I want to know the origins of the gem race but I never got that and it kind of and, and even after Steven Universe Future was over that little fa the fact that that little that that tidbit of information was left out of the show's run bugged me and it still bugs me to this day so yes I can kind of understand that hell even in lesser regards to something that genuinely did not bug me there like in Lion's Mane there was a chest a chest that we never saw the contents of but then likewise in Steven Universe Future when Steven was traveling between Lion and Lars's heads, we saw the chest was open and that there was nothing inside. Now, apparently the reason why the crew universe did that was to tell to show to everyone, oh no, this was just an empty box. There was nothing in there. But many people wanted to see if there was something in there, and the fact that we just cut back to it later and learned that the, that the chest was already opened, 
Well, it bugged quite a few fans, and they were like, I wanted to see what was in there. What was in there? Tell us what was in there. Like, little things like that kind of kept piling up, and people wanted answers. People wanted resolutions to these things, but ultimately, because that was the central focus of the show was always Steven, they always, ne no one really ever got those answers because, well, that was not the st that was not the story they were telling. The story was about Steven, which that's another flaw that some people have pointed out, and it's one that I do kind of agree with. The show, because the show was always focused on Steven, there were some details that we would always not that we would always miss, and that's always because the show, the central focus of the show was always Steven. We would always be following him around and seeing all the things that he saw. We would be learning the things that he learned about. We would only be learning these little bits and bit, bits and pieces of lore because Steven learned these bits and pieces of lore. He was Steven was always the central focus. We always saw things from his perspective. Maybe from maybe at best you could call it third person limited since we were not like literally seeing through his eyes, but basically wherever he was the show followed. If he was walking on the beach, the the show would now be on the beach. If he went back home, we got back. We go. We go back home. If he was dreaming, we'd see what he was dreaming, and so on and so forth. Basically, if we learned anything about the show, it was always through Steven's eyes. And while you can make the argument that there were episodes that were flashbacks and showed things that happened before Steven existed, again, we were still seeing them from Steven's perspective because we were only seeing those stories because they were being told to Steven. So. Again, we were only seeing them from Steven's perspective, and like, and we, we even in that plot, that plot point is even brought up in Steven Universe Future. Since, like I said, part of the thing with with Steven freaking out because all of his friends were going off and doing their own thing in the little graduation episode was because they were having all these major life revelations, and Steven wasn't seeing any of them. So, and the, when which by extension we weren't seeing them. So when they started talking about them, we were just as surprised as Steven was because we didn't see them make these developments. So why are they happening? From a storytelling perspective, it kind of is annoying because you do want to learn more about these people and see how they develop. But because you're always stuck following this one character, which I'm not saying Steven's a bad character, I do like Steven, at the same time, it does feel like that we're missing some story beats and some plot elements. And as a result, it does feel, it, things can feel a little bit lacking. It, things can feel a little bit lacking as it feels like we're missing details that should be essential to the story but we don't see. And as a result, that does also hurt the show. So yes, that's another flaw with the with the whole with the series. With that said though, do uh, with that said though, like I said, what makes Steven Universe work in my opinion, and I think can help you move past its flaws are the issue or the emotion are the characters, their arcs, the, emo the, re the the realities, the action, believe it or not, the emo the the emotional the emotional cores and ultimately just the resolutions, how things develop, how things move forward, and yes, even some bits and pieces of the lore. In that regard, Steven Universe Fu Steven Universe and Steven Universe Future do feel like do feel very compelling because you want to see more about these characters and how they interact with the world on what like from the get-go we could be drawn into steven universe just for, just by the by the action and the creativity of the action the crystal gems are are, are shown to be a very unique and adept team with a lot of with, with with enough variety in them to keep everything going you have the strong stalwart garnet who acts as the leader we have the calm demure pearl who also acts as the who acts as essentially the, the one foot in reality as she's the one that's all usually grounded and can keep things focused we have amethyst as a fun loving goofball who just kind of does her own thing and just how who just kind of does her own thing while still trying to help out wherever he can and then we got steven the plucky young member who just wants to be a part of the action only to fit only to kind of get thrown only to kind of realize what being in the middle of the action actually warrants when he at when well he gets when he's when he's actually begins to get when he starts getting included so there is a lot of so there is still some variety and the unique powers and unique powers and, and the unique subset of powers and weapons that each person that each gem each gem has combined with their own unique personalities i think makes for a good way makes for i think for a good team dynamic and a good and a good group of characters hell even when you start introducing the b team it actually really works and because the initial setting for the show was defining monsters it allowed for a very episodic it allowed for some good for us 
also some good episodic storytelling, as the gems always were on different missions and doing their own thing, which helped ease you into the world before they start introducing the more serious thing, before, where they, like when they later revealed the monsters were also gems that had been changed somehow. When we learned that the crystal gems that we follow may not all, may not be considered the good guys in gem society. How we learn that apparently the gems aren't just fighting monsters, they're survivors of an interstellar war, which suddenly gives a great weight, bigger weight to all the things they do, because now we learn there's a bigger enemy out there that the gems couldn't possibly f hope to fight on their own, and if they come back to knock on their door, then the gems may not win that fight. So it does still... Like it keeps adding new layers to the story, and with new, and with basically with, and basically since we already start to get to know these characters as the show goes along, as they face new challenges, we want to we keep rooting for them because we've grown to like them and want to see them come out on top. And we as we start really fully understanding what it is that they're going up against, it makes us more invested and more wanting, and makes us want to see them come out on top in the end. When like what like when Lapis first showed up and she took Earth's oceans, she was on she was the very first big threat the gems faced because the, before the gems only really fought monsters. Now they're fighting another gem who was so uh, that seemed even more powerful than any of them, and well, they didn't know how to take him down. Then we were introduced to the idea of the gem homeworld now coming back to Earth and the gems having no idea how to properly fight them. And, and in the first fight, the gems almost got creamed thanks to Jasper, and they almost and they were creamed, but de but the, and they only managed to get out of everything okay because Steven was human and could easily walk through his cell walls. And then likewise, then after that, they were dealing with the cluster, which was threatening the very Earth itself, so they had to figure out how to stop that. Then, of course, there was the constant threat of Jasper in the background who was trying to invade, plus the rubies as they were looking for Jasper. Then we had the diamonds that were set as the new standard with yellow and blue acting as the next as the next foes who were ready to come to Earth to get their who were ready to come to Earth to get what they wanted. And even above them, there was White Diamond. New threats were faced ever... The threats continued escalating and growing. And we and we wanted to... See, and basically, what kept us invested was wanting to see the gems overcome these obstacles, figuring out how to take them down, either physically by going into it by a fisticuffs and actually fighting, or as Steven chose to do it, a mo by it talking to them, talking them down. He he managed to beat Lapis by sympathizing with her and helping her out. He stopped... He stopped the cluster by getting through to the emotional bits of all of its bits and pieces and convincing them to just stay where they were because maybe they'd be happier and getting to know each other. Steven managed to beat back the diamonds by let, by alerting them that he was not in it, that he was, that they were related, that he was their family. He was pink diamond's son. He managed to get through to white diamond by helping her see her flaws and making her realize that she needed to step out of her comfort zone. Again, Steven, well, Steven, and the thing is, Steven was not like one to avoid a fight. He was like, I'll say this, Steven is a pacifist. As a person, he is a pacifist. As a character, he's a pacifist. Basically, he is a character who will want to avoid fighting when possible. But the thing is, he is a, the thing is, he is, he's, he is, he is a pacifism right because he doesn't just he doesn't abstain he doesn't abstain or fighting he just tries to he just tries to only fight when he needs to and guess what he does fight when he needs to while most of his powers are for defense he can fight back against them hell even when he has to fight against someone he even when he has to fight against but what even when he has to fight against someone, he'd rather not, but he can do it. When Bismuth turned against him, he was able to hold his own against her, and he, when he, when he actually was going up against the diamond, when he, act, when he and the rest of the Crystal Gems actually did first face the diamonds, they were able to hold their own for the most part, and Steven actually, and the thing is, Steven can pull his weight. He does, he does want to help out wherever he can, and part, and of course, that does mean that sometimes you will need to throw your weight around, and Steven was no slouch in that regard, which, again, going back to one of the things I love about the show, the action. All the characters really, really gelled well together when the action started get when the action started kicking in overdrive. Steven with his Steven could act as a good Steven as, as appropriately appropriately with a shield acted as a great defense in a way of in a way of deflecting danger while supporting his friends and loved ones. Connie, when she started learning how to use the sword, knew how to use was actually a very adept fighter, especially when Steven when she and Steven fused into Savani, who combined both of their abilities. Garnet Amethyst and Pearl each were fantastic with their abilities, and adding on the fusion aspect of everything, it allowed for some very creative scenarios and very interesting designs for all the fusions as they combined the different aspects personalities and weapons of the gems that made them up and it was always fun to see and I loved watching it go and I loved seeing them all come together 
Especially, hell, even including the B team of the Crystal Gems, that offered even more variety. We got Lapis with her Aqua Kinesis, and we see just how powerful she is with that. We have we have Paradon, her technical expertise, which yeah, she was mostly depowered, but she, I liked how she was able to try and utilize her her mind to her best capabilities, and was able to actually come up with creative solutions when dealing with problems. We have Bismuth, and how tough and how much of a powerhouse she was. I loved seeing her there, and I liked that. I liked see, and I loved that. And then of course there was Lion. Lion was awesome again. The action kicked ass, and there were many fights in this show that just made me go, oh, just seeing it go down, and I loved it. I loved it all. So, in that regard, I think the show still, so in that regard, the show definitely worked, but if we want to get to the emotional reality of the of everything and what made us really get drawn into the characters, well, I think we need to go over them one by one. And, of course, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be going into, like, the citizens of Beach City, because... There's too many to count, and their arc and their arcs were usually self-contained. But there are two Beach City citizens that I do think deserve more attention, specifically Lars and Sadie. And the and it makes sense why they would get the most attention out of everyone because apparently Rebecca Sugar thought of them first when she first when Rebecca Sugar first created was was first first came up with Steven Universe. Well, Lars and Sadie came before even Steven Universe. They were her own original create characters, and she worked them into the series. While they were never the main characters, they were still essentially her babies. Let's call them. And as a result, they did tend to get a good chunk of they did get tend to get a good chunk of attention throughout the show's run. And I won't deny their arcs tended to be the ones that dragged a little. At the very least, Lars's did. Like I said, part of Lars's whole arc throughout the show was essentially just getting his head out of his own ass. Lars was, throughout the majority of the show, was one of those characters that emphasized that lessons take time to sink in. Like, through many times, like, the same, like, every the, the, every time we had him be a central focus in an episode, the, the, the same thing had to be taught to him. That he had to get out of his own head, he had to be more considerate of people, he had to be more helpful to people, he had to be more understanding, actually be himself rather than be this shallow fake weirdo to try and, to try and get likes and so forth. That was always the central core of Lars's character. The problem is, however, he continually had to learn and relearn this lesson over the course of the show. And every time we saw him again after he learned the lesson, he'd be right back to square one. He just kept repeating over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and it got annoying. I can honestly say that if you, I can honestly say that if you go back and watch Steven Universe, a good chunk of the Lars ep Lars episodes essentially cover the same thing, and they suck as, a, and most of them tend to be not as good when you actually look at them. Hell, if you want to, hell, well, the only character I think was worse in terms of development was Ronaldo, who, because Ronaldo barely developed. His the most that Ronaldo developed was how he learned to not spread misinformation. Otherwise, he still had the same. He still had the same superiority complex and his and main character syndrome as he did in as he did from the, his first appearance. But whereas Lars, Lars always meant. But Lars always had to relearn a lesson, and it and it always took time to sink in. Which, to be fair, I think that is realistic. In reality, if someone had to be had to learn a lesson, it would ascend. Had to, learn, had, to, had to essentially learn a lesson. It takes time for them to sink in because we're so set in our ways. We don't want to change. We want to stay as we are. And if anyone tries telling us, oh, you need to change, well, we would resist. And Lars definitely showcased that. As well, he was aware that he needed to change and had to change. Well, he never saw a reason for it. He always stayed as he was, which I kind of sympathize to a degree. And I, if my regular settings aren't anything to go by. But by that same token, Lar by the same token, as a character in a show, it tends to be kind of annoying when you constantly see him having to relearn the same lessons and none of them sinking in. Sinking in. But that said though, what really became the zenith of Lars's character was when he had to confront those when he was when he was put in a life and death situation when he was taken off of Earth and brought to the gem homeworld. This is a situation where Lars essentially had to lit essentially had to kind of confront his own frailty and his own weaknesses. As in this situation, as it was because of his own cowardice that Lars got trapped on this, got trapped in the first place. And he, bl and even in the episode, and even in the following episodes after that, we saw that Lars did blame himself. Yeah, there was a part of him that wanted to blame Steven, but the thing is, it was because of his cowardice and, his, and him running away that he felt, 
that he got himself into the situation. And it was only by being it was only by being put in a life or death situation that the best parts of Lars were allowed to come out, and he began realizing that he didn't that he shouldn't be so self centered. Lars, it was only by yet it was which. That actually, I think, was good. And what made it better, too, was that when Lars actually did start having to change and actually was able to be himself and actually become, and actually try and be better, it it actually allowed him to do some incredible things by he by trusting in by trusting in the off colors. It allowed him to it allowed them all to do amazing things as they were able to escape homeworld, grab a ship, and travel the cosmos trying to find Earth. Hell. And and the one time that we ever actually saw Lars sort of kind of go kind of backtrack in terms of his character development was when he was feeling guilt over the fact that Sadie was moving on with her life and doing and doing things that he would have wanted to do. And the only reason he was feeling guilty was because he thought that Sadie was punishing him for all the crap he pulled when he was a jackass to her. So again, in some reg so yeah, that that was annoying, but it also came, but it also helped. Sh showcase that his character had developed because the old Lars would have just been angry at her for doing this because, well, he wanted to do it. Whereas the new Lars felt guilty, well, was that that felt that yeah he felt angry about that felt angry about it for that reason but in but also because but he also felt that she was doing it to punish him because he did so many bad things to her he was he was just basically he was like oh why did I treat her like this then she wouldn't be hurting me like this yeah it's still selfish but it does at least show that he wasn't the same guy he was before and by the end of the series I do admit I like seeing him as this new Lars more confident in himself ready to do things because he likes doing them not worried about what other people think about him even to the point where he's ready to go, where he know, where when his friends graduate from little homeschool, he's ready to go back out to the stars because he loved doing that. He yeah he can yeah yeah yeah. It took a while to get back home, but now he's going back out to the stars not because he has to, but just because he wants to, and he wants to do it with the friends he grew the friends he made. So I like that. And then in the case of Sadie, I think her big character arc was mostly in just becoming in, becoming independent, not having to. It's essentially a smaller version of what Steven was going through in Steven Universe Future. Because with La with Sadie, she was always tied to Lars. She always felt like she had to pick up his slack. Just kind of do everything that he... Kind of do everything where he... Essentially, do the jobs that he faltered in. Always try and be as player two as she... As they once said. They, as they once said. And while she did want Lars to grow and become better, part of her flaw was that she tended to try and be more in control. Which... I'll get to my thoughts on them as a couple after I'm done with her character. My point is, she wanted Lars to be better, but her main character, but her her whole was the whole point of her character was that she was always supporting him, always trying to bring out the best parts of him because she saw those best parts of him, but only when they were in private. In public, he was the same shallow jerk to her as he was to everyone else, and it did get to her. But what helped her get through it was the fact that she wanted to see the best parts of him come back out, and but ultimately, what helped her grow and stop worrying about him was when he was taken out of the equation. She never stopped worrying about him, don't, don't, don't misunderstand, but without having to constantly have Lars on her side, always having her pick up his slack or hell, even having her mom be breathing down her neck about all the about her new interests, it allowed her to expand in her own ways, discover things that she wanted to do. Which, going back to her mom, part of the reason why Sadie probably never branched out the way she did was because every time that she tried to do something for herself, her mom would jump in, would essentially throw her into the deep end of the pool and be all gung ho about these things. Whereas Sadie, whereas for Sadie, it was just a passing interest. She never really had a chance to discover anything that she liked because her mom would be so supportive that she would think that she would push her, her daughter to the zenith, the ultimate zenith of this talent, which would eventually kill any interest in it. But in this, but by the time Lars vanished, she not only was able to get through to her mom and made her realize, oh, you need to back down, but without Lars, without Lars always there to essentially drag her down, I'm just gonna call it. It allowed her to discover more about herself, what she wanted to do, what she what she wanted to go, where she wanted to go with her life, and as a result, that's what led her to being. That's what led her to going with the cool kids and forming Sadie Killer and the Suspects. What led her to like singing. What led her to actually go to the stage and enjoy it on her terms, to get famous on her terms. And then likewise, when Satan, likewise when Steven Universe Future rolled around and the Suspects were ready to break up up she was already she got to a, she was essentially more so secure where she was that she knew where she wanted to go her mom like at this point i'm guessing her relationship with her mom had gotten better as she did want her mom to come to her shows from then on but at this point she knew where she wanted to go and she wanted while she wanted to be a singer while she wanted to continue being a singer she didn't want to do it as part of she didn't want to do it as sadie killer she wanted to do it as herself with her partner chef and 
I like that. I like essentially her arc was just about finding herself, about discovering what she wanted to be in life and where she wanted to go without having to feel like she had, without having to feel like that someone that like she has to always look out for another person. And by the end, I think it works, and I like that. And I kind of and I like that. It's a good arc, and I do enjoy it. But as for the crystal gems, they all also have their own unique arcs. And if we're gonna go over them, I'm gonna start with the B team. And well. I think I'll start with Bismuth, as she was the, as out of all the members of the B team, she's the one that appeared the least often in the show. As, as like, as, as the majority of the show, she spent bubbled. So, Bismuth's character, for me, Bismuth's character arc was mostly just kind of getting out of her own way, so to speak. Because the thing is, Bismuth was, re Bismuth's whole thing when she was introduced was, like other gems, she was meant to be an enemy that Steven would have to fight that would eventually be worked over to his side. But unlike most of the other enemy gems that Steven would turn into allies, Bismuth was already an ally. She was a member of the Crystal Gems, and ultimately, and ultimately, unlike most of the other, most well, unlike all the, all the other members of the B team of the Crystal Gems, Bismuth did not have to be won over to the cause. She fully believed in the cause, and the thing is, she embraced the cause. From her very first, the very first episode that show that featured her, she very, we saw that she implemented that into her everyday life. She wanted to. She cared about her friends and her, and, and their well-being. She was ready to take the fight to homeworld because she was ready to defend her way of life. And the thing is, while she was ready, while she was ready to kick ass and fight, she was also very open about trying new things. When she when she saw when she invited Steven to take part in their in the Crystal Gem fighting rituals, Steven said that he had his own rituals, and she was happy and she was curious about them and happily partook in them. She didn't look down on them. She ha she liked doing them. She ha she enjoyed making pizza, watching movies. She wanted to try sleeping, and when she saw Steven was dealing with stuff, she gave him a shoulder to cry on and, a, and an ear to listen. There, just the thing is, Bismuth at the end of the day did have her own character arc going on, and she or not character arc, she did. She was a crystal gem. In her own words, no one was more of a crystal gem than her. The only problem is that her love for the that her belief in this in this ideal was so strong that she was willing to kill for it, and that's that's where then that's where the split between her and Steven came in. But what? But ultimately, her development was just you know not doing that. Essentially, Bismuth kind of essentially Bismuth had to learn to rein it in, so to speak. And quite frankly, well, some people, like I said, well, people complained about how quickly her character turned after Stephen brought her out of her bubble for Ruby and Sapphire's wedding. I would argue that it makes sense why it would be so quick of a turn. After all, Biz. After all, Bismuth already showed that she can, that she believes that she that she loves and cares for the Crystal Gems, not just the cause, but the team itself. There are many people beyond the beyond Garden Amethyst and Pearl that she that she cared about and saw as friends and family and allies and comrades in arms. And so learn and so when she was pulled out of her bubble and learned that paint that Rose Quartz essentially implemented her whole shatter a diamond strategy and then it came back to bite everyone in the ass something fierce it makes sense why she would immediately change her mind about that because one she was all we already saw that she was open to new ideas and two this is exact essentially we're just she was shown the consequences of what her of what she would of what would have happened if we if they if pink diamond had actually been shattered if she did shatter a diamond this the the, end, the results would have been almost the same her her friends and family would have been bubbled and and, un, and unlike and un, and the thing is if she really had shattered pink diamond then there would not have been anyone to save even though her even her last remaining friends because it was only thanks to rose's shield that garnet and pearl even made it out alive so yeah, so, so yeah, essentially, the, her character development was very, a very quick one. Basically, again, it was just essentially learning to rein it in, and while her while her dedication to the Crystal Gem cause never ceased, as even when when she did fully become a uh, fully become an ally, she still was at, gave a shoulder to cry on and still tried out new ideas. At the end of the day, her development was kind of the shortest and definitely the one that didn't need as much attention. But following her, you have Peridot. Peridot was the, Peridot was technically the first enemy turned ally. Uh, you could technically argue that Lapis was that, but I'm going with who joined the Crystal Gems. And in the case of Peridot, she was the first new member of the Crystal Gems. And basically, her basically her arc was mostly just about experiencing new things. Per uh, the thing is, Peridot as a character was all, from the very first time you saw her was very 
laser focused on her job. She was always concerned about just getting the job done, doing it in the most efficient way possible, and then moving on. And she, when she when she was assigned to check on the cluster for Earth, that's how she that's how she can that's how she originally wanted to do it. And the only reason that she even went to the lengths she did to get the job done was because the crystal gems were getting in her way. They were destroying her flask robinoids. They destroyed the homeworld warp so she wouldn't be able to warp back. She employed, she got, she joined Jasper's crusade down to earth because she needed to check on the cluster at all. But, and even when she, and even when the, and even when she was trapped on earth, she just wanted to get in, check on the cluster and then get out. Only really fighting the crystal gems when it was becoming clear that they were going to, that they were going to be a constant problem for her. But what helped her develop and what helped her, and what helped kind of broaden her horizons was when she saw new things, began experiencing new things. Because, well, the scientist in her was curious about them. She was, like, we are, like, from the outset, we know that Peridot is intelligent. She's not emotionally intelligent, mind you, because she really had no way, because even from the beginning, she had no real way of managing her emotions. She was always hyperactive, an egotist, always wanting to be the center of attention. But what made her, but ultimately, what made her want to explore and see new things is when she experienced them. And ultimately, what kind of made her want to preserve the earth was believe it or not appealing to her scientific side by Par because Peridot was able to see and experience these new things it made her want to fall kind of see that kind of follow them to their logical ending kind of going to the episode where Steven Peridot and, and Amethyst went to Funland and the Funland and they and Amethyst said they had to try out the most fun ride first when I reversed, he said, bold. Le Peridot was the one that said, bold. Let's follow this logic. Again, Peridot always... Pa part of the reason why Peridot wanted to experience Earth was because she was curious about it. Curious about how it operated. Curious about how things were. That she saw she saw things that she had never seen before in her little bubble, so to speak. And it made her curious about them. Want to explore them more. Actually, and, from, and as she explored them, she discovered new things that she liked. She discovered new interests. She discovered all these new different things and learning those things made her want to discover more things essentially her development was her development was essentially just opening her mind and experiencing new things and ultimately the one and ultimate and ultimately it was an the one who helped her do that was steven and eventually the crystal gems and I liked see, and I think what I liked doing about that, and what I liked about that, is how you saw her slowly expanding on that. When, like at first, like at first, she grew to trust Steven as he didn't fit the archetype for how the how she thought the gems were supposed to be. Then he showed her rain, which made her more curious about that, which made her more curious. Then she started experiencing more things on Earth, got to know the gems more, and the like. I said, the more she broadened her horizons, the more she began to better appreciate it, and the more she started realizing. I kind of like this random mud ball, and it's what led her to actually becoming a better person. She was still very much kind of an egotist who always wanted to be the center of attention, but at the end of the day, she very much cared about everybody, and she started learn realizing that there were things on this world that she started that she grew to care about, and yeah, that she would want to protect. I think it was a very nice and interesting arc. But if I want to get into big character arcs, the one, the one member of the B team, of the Crystal Gems, who had the biggest arc was Lapis Lazuli, and her arc I think was the most in-depth story that that, the, that Steven Universe ever had. Because at the, because the thing is, the core of Lapis's character arc was essentially just freedom. Lapis, the constant theme when it came to Lapis and her arc was control and i don't mean like her being in control i mean always being under someone else's control always being under someone else's thumb always being a prisoner and it was her desire to not be a prisoner that pushed her to the lengths that she did throughout the series but no matter where she went she would always she was always someone's prisoner in the beginning of the series she in the beginning of the series first she was a prisoner of the mirror as her gem was placed on there and and even when and even when she was found by the crystal gem she was never let free then suddenly steven let her out suddenly steven let her out but guess what she's still trapped on earth because her gem is cracked and she can't just fly off so once again she's trapped but then suddenly steven frees her by by restoring her gem and allowing her to fly back to homeworld only to find that Homeworld is treats her just as much of a like just as much of a prisoner as the Crystal Gems did as she's as she had Intel from Earth and they and they want it to figure out what the hell's going on down there. So again, so again, no matter where Lapis went, she kept trying to find she kept wanting to find free she kept wanting freedom but was always so trapped and used by someone. Even when she got back to Earth, even when she did go back to Earth, she was still made another prisoner again as she was a 
as she was trapped in a fusion, as she was trapped in the Malakut fusion with Jasper, and had to potentially hold that, potentially had to hold the prison together just to keep Jasper from getting away. But the thing is, the thing that made her want to change, the thing that helped her grow and what made her kind of experience freedom was, well, Steven. Steven was the first person that she encountered who didn't treat her like an asset, who didn't treat her like the enemy. He treated her like a friend. And it was through that friendship that Lapis started finding true freedom. Because Steven did for her what no one else did for her. He gave her a choice. He allowed, like, he never beat, like, he didn't force Lapis to do the things he did. she did, but rather... He helped support her in the choices that she made. When she wanted to leave Earth, he gave her the means to leave Earth by repairing her gem. When she came back to Earth, he gave her the chance to leave the cell, but she kind of locked herself away because she was afraid of the outcomes, which I'll get to that in a minute. But in, but by, but ultimately, Steven was one of the few people on in the universe who wanted to act, who actually saw her as a person and not just as another prisoner. And it's and it's ultimately by and ultimately it was through Steven that she allowed herself to open up. When when Lapis was finally freed from the, the Malachi fusion, yeah, she still stayed on Earth. But unlike the last time, it was her choice. And by making that choice and by listening to Steven, she began learning new things. And the thing is, that's the key word. That's the key there. She listened to Steven. Steven never forced her to do anything. He never once told her, do this or do that. He always just persuaded her, talked to her, and never talked down to her. And if she didn't think the way that he, that he was trying to direct her, he never like got angry about it or treated her like the enemy. It was just, that was her call. It was never something that it was not the choice. He never for, for, he never forced a choice on her. He always made sure that where she ended up was where she wanted to end up. And I and ultimately that friendship allowed her to and ultimately that friendship allowed her to meet new people. She gave Paradise a chance because of Steven. She gave the Crystal Gems a chance because of Steven. Even if she wasn't fighting on their side, she still started opening up, and that allowed and that allowed her to actually be get more, to grow and expand and become a better person. But ultimately, the biggest hurdle that she had to cross, it was herself. The one th the thing is, while physically she was always she would never well physically she had escaped her prisons. Emotionally, she was still trapped because she was afraid of being caught in a war. She was afraid of losing everything that she had built in another war, and so as a result, she essentially became her own prisoner it was part of the reason why she hid in the cell when steven wanted to free her when Ste when during the jailbreak episode as and as she was so afraid of conflict and being caught in the middle of anything that she just that she was just wanting to hide away and then likewise even when she and then likewise when presented with a, th with a threat that the diamonds may be coming back to earth her first instinct was to just run like hell and never stop running and even when and no matter what and ultimately and ultimately this one up costing her as well. She became a prisoner of her own of her own making because she was so determined to not be part of the conflict that she wound up cutting off everything herself and was isolating herself because of her, from that. But what ultimately allowed her to grow and finally decide, no, I want to be a member of, the, of this team and I want to be there for these people, was by realizing that it was these pe that was by realizing. That was her problem. She needed to get out of her own way. That was essentially the root of her character arc. Her having to essentially be, her essentially having to get ready to jump in, damn the consequences. Because if these things that she cared about were so worth that, or so worth having, then they were worth fighting for. And it was ultimately that realization that allowed her to start making her own choices without being restricted by her by by either physical or emotional limits. And I think it's a very compelling arc. And the way they handle it, and all the time they dedicate to it, it feels. Very very realistic and it does it feels very realistic and very much feels like a strong character arc for La, for Par, for La, for a, for lapis so again good stuff and I suppose if we're talking the B team, I should probably talk about Connie. Connie, I've heard described as a character who didn't really get a lot of development. And to that, I disagree a big time. Connie did get development over the course of the show. And throughout the one throughout the entire series, the one thing that was remained consistent with her was that she was essentially the yin to Steven's yang. Where Steven went one way, she would go another. And in the beginning, it was that in the beginning, how that was showcased was that Steven was loud and in your face and very sociable, while Connie was quiet, demure well, Connie was kind of quiet, demure, and more reserved. However, as Steven helped her get out of come out of her shell and open up more, 
Well, we started seeing a new side of her come out, and that side of her was one who was ready to just yell in your face and let you know that you were that you sucked just so that you could start seeing reality. And quite frankly, when I first re when I first was re realizing her character arc, I kind of was puzzled why this would be the character that she went through. But the thing is, I, the thing is, it makes sense why she would do this because Connie was always well, kind of. I don't want, I don't know what the right word is. Give me a second. I'm just going to say pent up because I'm blanking on the word. I'm probably going to remember when this video is over. But put simply, Connie was always, over, her parents were always kind of, always kept her in a little, in, were, was always, always kind of kept her in her own little box. Always kind of had an eye on everything that she did. Always told her how she needed to act, what she needed to do, and so on and so forth. And while Connie loved her parents, at the same time, living in such an environment and being so restricted and feeling like you have to be this certain person, it makes sense why, when she finally was given a chance at freedom, why she would be the person that she was because so because she's experienced that kind of mindset she's experienced having people shove things in your face and essentially there's a part of her mind that says i am so done with that shit so i do it so i find so i find that interesting because by dealing with this attitude by essentially seeing this over protect by essentially being on the receiving end of this attitude she knows how to confront it and deal with it because unlike steven she won't try and reason with you by appealing to your emotional side she'll reason with with you by telling you why you suck and why you need to do things better and we've seen that with her in a, few, a handful of times in the show in the nightmare hospital episode when her mom kept trying to take the sword from her she finally threw she finally kind of showed her mom how much she her, she was really missing by showcasing hey did you realize my glasses didn't have any glass in them for the longest time and then finally fighting, and then and then joining Steven to fight off the gem mutants. And then like what, or during the Crystal Temps episode, where she and the beat, where she Lapis, Pe where she Lapis and Peridot were taking over the Crystal Gems, and she had to let Lapis and Peridot know how childish they were. Or hell, even in the I Am My Monster episode, she was the one that brought everyone down to earth and pretty much told everyone to get their heads out of their own asses because Steven needed help. In that regard, I find. In that regard, Connie's character arc was mostly just coming out of her own shell and becoming a and becoming a stronger, more independent person who could stand on her own two feet without having someone hold her down. Not only that, it was which honestly I think is a very good, which I think is a good character arc. It was she was a nice counter for Steven. She bet she like she like. She became like, thanks to Steven, she became a lot more outgoing and friendly. But ultimately, it was through Steven's intervention that she was able to get that fighting spirit, was able to stand up to people, and ultimately became a stronger person. And again, I like that. And apologies if it feels like I'm rushing through things. I don't want this to hit the two-hour mark, though it's probably going to anyway. But you get my point. But then, but of course, this also leads us to the main crystal gems. And if we're gonna go with those, let's at least let's start with Garnet because I feel like her character arc was the one that was the most subtle so to speak and the thing is when i first started these vlogs i had always known i was going to be talking about all these different character arcs but the thing is i always wondered what i was going to do with garnet because it didn't because even thinking back to the series i now always wonder what garnet's character arc was because it's clear that she did undergo changes i just didn't know what those changes were but then it hit me one day while I was listening to one of my vlogs, specifically the one where Amethyst cracked her gem. And during that, and during the course of the episode, where in, in the episode I was talking about, we saw we saw Garnet getting a bit more impatient. And I finally realized, and I finally realized what Garnet's character arc was: keeping it together. When it came down to Garnet, her constant struggle as a character was always needing to be in control, mostly because she was not just the leader of the Crystal Gems. But she was the answer. She was supposed to know everything. She was always supposed to have her eye on the prize. Know exactly what to do and how to do it. But the thing is... She never always knew, she didn't always know. There were, well, Garnet, the majority of the time, had her, uh, was always very, was always calm and stable and knew exactly what's it, what someone had to do to get out of a situation. There were those rare few times when she wasn't in control, when something would get to her emotionally and she would, and she would, and she would draw a blank. And during those times, you started seeing another side to Garnet. One who was more impatient. One who was more quick to act. One who kind of, who would go more silent. Mostly because she had no idea what to do, but she was supposed to. She was supposed to always be in control. Always know exactly what the right thing to do was. But there would always be times when she would be overwhelmed. When something... 
where she would know, or if she would know what the proper solution was, but circumstances weren't allowing that solution to come to fruition. And as a result, we would see in those moments that Garnet would lose control. When Garnet would feel, when Garnet would not would be acting without thinking. When Garnet would be doing things that she didn't, that a calm, that a calm, rational person wouldn't. And the thing is, all of those reactions came from the fact that she was getting upset, that she was feeling the pressure, and ultimately, the ma her main priority was that she always felt that she had to be in control, that she always had to, quite figuratively and literally, keep it together. She always had to know what the proper solution was, and when she didn't know, it would get, it would upset her, it would get to her, it would make her emotional, and the thing is, even the tiniest thing that would be, and the thing is, there would be times when she would break. Going to the episode, going to when 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 Pearl tricked Garnet into fusing with her to form Sardonyx, though that was an ultimate betrayal, and Garnet had absolutely no idea how to counter it, and thus as a result, Ruby and Sapphire split up over it because of that because of that disagree because of that disagreement. But the thing is, even in other episodes of the series, we've seen that Garnet has struggled to keep it together because she's supposed to be perfect. She's supposed to be the perfect relationship, but. Every time that she encounters a problem that she doesn't know the answer to, she almost cracks. When she saw the when she saw the ge the gem experiments, the gem mutants, she her first reaction was that she almost broke down. She had to keep like she she got emotional. She almost fell apart over it. But ultimately, and it was only thanks to Steven that she was able to hold it together. And ultimately, Garnet's main ultimately what Garnet struggled to do throughout the show was not have an emotional breakdown because there were because she was supposed to know everything but she always struggled to to try and hold it all together until finally one day she was hit with something that was so hit that hit so hard that she couldn't keep it together and that was the revelation that rose quartz was pink diamond that <clears throat> That revelation hit Garnet so hard that she split up. And that's, and believe it or not, by, by by finally having that breakdown and finally falling apart, it's what allowed her to finally move forward as a character. Which also goes hand in hand with Ruby and Sapphire's development. As Ruby and Sapphire always believed that they were that they were supposed to always be together, that they couldn't be apart, that they never could be apart. They were that they had to always be with each other, always had to be a part of each other's lives. But by ha by 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 virtue of Garnet splitting up like she did, it allowed Ruby and Sapphire the chance to you know discover new things about themselves, learn about learn to be independent on their own, and ultimately come back together in a much more healthy fashion. Because on that because they finally only came together because they wanted to, not because they felt like they had to. And as a result, it allowed them to form a much more healthy relationship that. Quite frankly, and ultimately, a lot kind of also affected Garnet because by that, because ultimately by having this realization, she thought she was a, by ultimately having this split, she was able to realize that it was okay to let go sometimes. It was okay to not always know the answers. It was okay to fall apart every now and then. You, no one was perfect. No one had to be perfect. And despite what Garnet felt like, despite what Garnet always felt like as being the leader of the Crystal Gems and as the answer. She didn't always have to be the one. She didn't always have to be the one everyone turned to for answers. She could be. She could provide a helping hand. She could. She could do whatever she could and offer support when needed. But at the end of the day, it was okay to let go and not and pro and spend essentially split up every now and then. So again, I think. So again, it was a more subtle arc, but it was a definitely a good one. After that, you have Pearl, and her character arc, in my opinion, was codependence. Pearl's big issue was, by virtue of her being a Pearl, she always felt like that she was nothing without someone else there to support her. And ultimately, throughout the entire show, she always kind of put her val her worth and value on someone else. And her ultimate character arc throughout the show was realizing that she had to stand on her own, that she had, that she was strong enough on her own, that she didn't need someone like Rose Quartz or Steven or, or Steven to make her strong. She had to stand on her own strength. And as the show went along, they actually showed that in very unique and different ways. In the beginning of the show, she always had nothing but nice things to say about Rose because she was obsessed with Rose and saw her as her one true love. But then likewise, in various other ways, we saw her codependence coming out as in many regard as there are many times when she always felt that she was weaker by virtue of not having someone there to support her. Like when she 
like when Amethyst and Garnet fused together to form to form Sugalite. She always thought that they were a brood. It's like she said they were a brood, and, and she was upset that Steven was looking up to them. But then in a fair fight, she thought that she was going to lose because she was weak. But it was ultimately Steven giving her a pep talk that fought, made her find her worth. Or maybe, or the time, or even going back to the stuff with Sardonyx. In that regard, per yeah, what Pearl did was horrible. But it came from a place of. But it, came, but it only came about because she wanted to feel strong, strong, independent, not having to worry about, feel, not having to feel like that she was nothing. And, ult and, by virtu and ultimately, by fusing with Garnet to form Sardonic, she felt like she could be a part of that. But, which, which ultimately, yeah, did end up hurting her friend. It ended up hurting her friend, but ultimately, by, by sent but ultimately, what helped her realize that what she did was a bat was very much bad. She had to. She kind of had to accept that she could be strong on her own, and it was Garnet, the person that she tricked, that helped her reach that point. And ultimately, she, and, and and eventually, she kind of had to realize that she that she could do everything that she could on her own without having to worry about someone be, having to rely on her, and she could be strong in the real way that she didn't have to. And that, which I like. It was a very unique and interesting arc, and I dug it. Which kind of also leads me to Amethyst again. Sorry if I'm rushing through these. But Amethyst's arc, in my opinion, was the one that I found the most relatable. Just kind of having that bit of self-worth, which, yes, does kind of go hand-in-hand -hand with Pearl's character development, but in its own unique way, because whereas per because Pearl definitely was okay with herself, it's just that she felt that she was weak and that on her own she was nothing. Whereas with Amethyst... Amethyst always felt like she constantly had to improve herself and always had to do little things and always had to keep doing things to prove not to everyone else, not just to everyone else, but to herself that she was of worth. Because at the end of the day, Amethyst hated herself and everything that she did and everything that she did was mostly just there to act as a distraction from her having to confront these facts. She always was disgusted with the fact that she came from a kindergarten that drained life out of the planet. She always was. She always felt like she was the weaker of the crystal gems. That she could never really carry herself. She always felt like she was lesser and that she shouldn't be anything. But ultimately, what made Amethyst kind of come out of that? What made Amethyst start to what, love herself was her friends helping her friends, and that like which goes back to what I said earlier. What my friend, what my friend Kiki, if you're watching this, hiya. Um, it basically what what she what my friend told me about how. Sometimes you do need that reminder. And the thing is, while Amethyst always dealt with these issues, what helped to get her back, what always helped improve her mood was when her friends were there to support her. When Steven was there to remind her that she was worth something, that she could, that she, that, that she could do all these things. And that, yeah, sometimes she faltered, but they all faltered. And there's nothing wrong with that. If she faltered, they'd help her pick up the slack just as much as they know that they, that she'd help them pick up their slack when they faltered. And likewise, it was, and likewise, it was by kind of sharing a similar problem with Steven as he always felt like he was lesser by not being Rose Quartz that allowed them to grow closer as friends and what ultimately helped them fuse, eventually fuse into smoky quartz because of that same thing. And what ultimately helped Amethyst realize that she ne and what ultimately helped Amethyst get over this fact, and what helped her become, and what helped her get her self worth was when she met her Famethyst. When she realized that there were people who did want her around, that did care about her, who were who were wait, who had happily waited for her, but due to very, but due to circumstances out of their control, they couldn't wait for her. As a result, as a result, by realizing that there, by essentially realizing that there were people in the world who cared about her and wanted to be a part of and wanted to have her in her life. Like, it helped her start kind of seeing herself from their eyes, and it allowed her to love herself more. And I loved seeing that. I loved that development. It was one I related to so much, and because I always, because I do relate to the hate yourself, to kind of hating myself in that regard, to hating myself. And I, quite frankly, it allowed, it made Amethyst kind of one of my favorite characters in the series as a result. So, I always liked that. And finally, of course, there's Steven, Un Steven Universe, since, you know, it's his show. Steven's character arcs were numerous, and all of them, I think, were d executed rather well. There was Steven, like, the, the whole core of Steven Universe was essentially just a character piece for him, a coming-of-age story. Him essentially seeing all these u new and unique things and having to try and find his place in all that. We And throughout the, throughout the course of the show, we saw Steven grow and change and mature. We saw him turn, go from a young, naive boy who was more upset about his favorite about his favorite sa ice cream sandwich being canceled to one who was more, who would fight tooth and nail just to keep his friends safe. Who went to the other end of the universe to to dismantle an intergalactic empire. Who went toe to toe with this psychotic the psychotic rubber hose character just to save.
save the planet, just to save his planet. And ultimately, throughout all these struggles and all these issues, we saw Steven grow in dealing with his own problems. The fe the guilt over not being able to save everyone, uh, sadness over the fact that he that he didn't that he couldn't always fit into his mother's shadow, and eventually, as we see in Steven Universe, the after effects of having fought for so long and then not knowing what to do. I'm not knowing what to do with himself. It's a very all of this was a very unique. St all of this was all in Steven's story, and all of it I think was executed perfectly. Seeing Steven grow and change, seeing Steven make these connections, and ultimately throughout it all, we throughout it all, what made it all so interesting was seeing Steven just fighting tooth and nail to get his happy ending, facing a world that constantly kept telling him, no, you don't get a happy ending, and kept sa and him saying, no, I'll, then if, well, no, well, if I can't have one, then I'll make one. Basically, just seeing Steven, con just this, this constant story, and ultimately, the struggles that Steven had to deal with, both emotionally, just to reach that point. Because Steven, because ultimately, Steven never, because ultimately, Steven always had something blocking his way. Sometimes it was his own self-doubt. Sometimes it was his guilt. But no matter what happened, Stephen would always fight, find ways to get over it. Stephen, how, Stephen would have some people there to help him out. He, help him get across, help him kind of build those new bridges. And at the end of the day, as the show went along, we saw Stephen grow and change and become a better person. He became more adept at using his powers. He fully understood the seriousness of the job and dedicated himself more to getting it done right. He was, he accepted, he began accepting the darker realities of what the of what it is that they did will also ascent well also eventually learning that he himself was of worth as a person that he wasn't anyone else just him and that all the choices he made were stuff that he made and yes eventually he did end up dealing with some with more serious issues as we saw in steven universe future but by the end of it all it allowed him to still come out stronger because 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 all the people he helped out along the way, they were all there for him. All of them were ready to help him deal with this shit, and no matter what, no matter how hard it would be to fight, they would always be there in his corner backing him up. And ultimately, I think that's the true core of, well, Steven Universe, and I think that's what makes it a great show. The action, the humor, the the the, the character drama, the how well written it, the well the writing, all of it I think comes together and creates a very emotionally charged show that I think just hits all of those sweet points. And ultimately, no matter what for whatever, no matter for what reason you watch the show. I think there's something to like because Steven Universe covers the show covers quite a variety of topics: gender identity, sexuality, interpersonal choices, the, the, staying true to yourself, staying true to yourself. It's co it's co coming of age, or or how I or what I find what I find interesting: change, growing up, having to find your place, and ultimately dis discovering more about who you are. That, in my opinion, is what made Steven Universe strong, and at the end, of, or makes Steven Universe as a show strong. And no matter how and going even going back to watching it for these vlogs or when i first got the dvd it felt so interesting to just go back to the beginning and then just watch these characters grow and change over the course of these series as they deal with these issues and seeing how they go from these people and seeing how they go from one place to the next and seeing how they and yeah it's not an easy journey but it's one that all of them have to make and ultimately we and ultimately steven's there for them every step of the way and quite frankly all that together, I think, just makes Steven Universe, the entirety of it, just a damn good show. And ultimately, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. If these vlogs have hopefully done anything for you, I hope they've at least encouraged you to go and check out Steven Universe. Like I said, there's pl there's a lot there to like, and while I know, again, some internet personalities have nothing but bad things to say about it, I personally think that you just need to watch the show and then come to an answer yourself. If you don't, if you end up not liking it, well then at least you gave it a shot. If you don't, and you've, at least you gave it a shot. If you don't, like I said, like I said, there are some things in there that can definitely annoy people and it's not a perfect show. But at the end of the day, I still think it's a damn good show. Very much worth your time. Carries a lot of emotional weight. And at the end of the day, I think is just one that, that, you, that you'd be doing yourself a service just to watch. So yeah, I've been talking for two hours and at, the, at this point, 11 minutes. And my voice is getting dry and raspy, and I'm sure that there's a good chunk of you who are tired of hearing me talk. So I think it's time that I wrap this video up. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and well, if you watched the if you if you watched all these vlogs from the beginning with me, then I thank you for sticking it out with me for this long. This has been a big this has been a long and harrowing journey, but it was one I was happy to do. I was all. 
Ever since Steven Universe finished, I resolved that I did want to do a vlog about it should it come out on DVD, and I'm happy that I finally got the chance to do so. Steven Universe is one, oh, Steven Universe is one of those shows that when it first came on, I was unsure if I even wanted to watch, but ultimately when I did give it a shot, I was happy with what I saw, and at the end of the day, it is one of these cart is a cartoon that I am happy to add as part of my DVD collection, and one that I'll happily rewatch any time if just for cer watch certain episodes. So, at the end of the day, I said at the end of the day, I still very much love this show. And if you want to, if, if these vlogs have incur have made you want to go and give it a shot, then I'm glad, then I'm happy to have got you there. So, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. I thank you for sticking with sticking with me for this long, both for the video and for these vlogs in general. And well, the next time, and well, I do plan to do more vlogs. In fact, next week I'm going to start a new vlog series that I've been looking forward to do doing for a little while now. But until then, I didn't like I said. I hope you enjoyed these videos. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'll put my links to my social media pages in the description. And if you want to follow me there, you can. But otherwise, if you were just here with Steven Universe. I'm, th I'm thankful that you were able to join me on this journey, and well, if you want to still see more of my vlogs, well, I hope to see you next time. Hell, there I, I even have other vlogs going on, like the Spider-Verse retrospectives, or currently the MCU Perspectives What If Edition, which will also be ending in a couple of weeks, so whatever, but either way, if you're only here, but maybe either way, if you're only here, if you're only here for Steven Universe, I thank you for staying with me for this long, and well, I'm just thankful that people watch these videos at all, so... Till next time, I hope you have a good evening. I'm glad that you stuck with me for this long, and as always, take care.